You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to today's podcast. I'm Alan Gingrich, the Director of Hunting Ops at United Kennel Club. Uh, Trevor Wade is out today, so you're going to just have me today. But uh, today we're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to talk about the hunting beagle format, and specifically we're going to uh, talk about our Hall of Fame dogs in, the, in that format. Uh, to date, we have a total of eight hounds that have made the Hall of Fame in UKC. Uh, that's a program that has started now about three years ago, I guess, and we've got uh, so like we've got eight of them so far, and uh, so we're going to cover each one of these. And I have had the opportunity to sit down with all of the owners and some of the handlers of these fine hounds uh, here in the last uh, several months, and so you're going to hear from them today. So, but first, before we go, to that what does it uh, take to become a uh, hunting beagle Hall of Fame? So it's much like coon hounds, the same format basically. It's all about cast wins. So in a registered in, uh, to become a champion, it takes five registered cast wins in that category. Once a dog's a reg or once a dog's a champion in the field, it takes they compete against other champions and grands, and they need eight champion wins to become a grand hunting beagle champion. Once they're a grand, after each eight each uh, eight cast wins, they become a grand two. So in other words, a, a champion dog that has uh, uh, eight champion wins is going to be a grand, and then the next eight is going to make him a grand two. Uh, 24, uh, the next eight being a total of 24, makes him a grand three, and so on down. Uh, and eventually, once a dog has 37 grand champion wins, that will make him a Hall of Fame dog. So if you add those five uh, registered cast wins and also the eight champion wins to that, that makes a grand total of 50 cast wins. So from nothing to Hall of Fame would be a grand total of uh, 50 cast wins and makes the dog a Hall of Fame. So uh, but we're going to get right into it here. Our first dog to uh, make Hall of Fame was a dog that was born in July of 2015. And that was a uh, female actually out of North Carolina. She earned the title. The first one to earn it was on February 7th of 2021. And the name of that dog is Deep River Firewater Blue Flame. She will forever be the first hunting beagle in UKC to make Hall of Fame. And ironically, she is also owned by uh, a lady handler, Kristen Bundy, owner handler, uh, co-owned with Jeff Stacy. They're out of uh, Archdale, North Carolina. And uh, Kristen is very well known in the hunting beagle format in that circuit. There has had some nice dogs. Flame was one of her uh, staple dogs in her kennel for uh, a, a bunch of years. She did a lot of winning, obviously, with this dog. Uh, and ironically, the fourth dog to make uh, hunting or uh, hunting beagle hall of fame was a litter mate to, to flame. Same litter, same everything. Uh, that is owned by Jeff Stacy, and that's a dog named Stacy's Mountain Outlaw Freck. So uh, the first uh, the first two folks uh, you're going to hear from is Kristen. Uh, Bundy and Jeff Stacy, both from North Carolina. So without further ado, let's just get right to the interview. Here they are. Kristen, how are you? Good. How are you, Alan? Good, good, good. I'm sitting here with Kristen Bundy and also Jeff Stacy. How are you, Jeff? I'm doing good, Alan. Good, how are you? Good, good. So uh, we're going to talk about some Hall of Fame dogs, and we don't have very many to talk about, but uh, you guys both own one, both from North Carolina, talking about... Uh, uh, Deep River, Firewater, Blue Flame, and then uh, Stacy's Mountain Outlaw Freck. And Jeff, uh, you you bred these dogs off of uh, Outlaw Wild Man and Firewater Sassy. Tell us a little bit about how that, why you decided to make that cross and that breeding. You remember? Yes, remember very well. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Overcash and I was partners on the Sassy dog, and you know Mark. Got some of the old blood on the female side, and uh, we did some studying on it, and felt like it would really cross well. You know, had on his side, he had some of the bold stroke and uh, the older Brinko, which Wildman had the older Brinko also, and that's 
why we felt like it would be a really good cross. And yeah. it turned out to be one of the best I've made, that we've made. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how many were in the litter? Big litter? Or what? There was uh, seven in the litter to, that I remember. Uh, there was two that uh, males that went over 15, so that it didn't get registered. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there was uh, five that I know was kept. Yeah. Mark kept two. I kept two. Kristen got one. Oh, yeah. So how did you pick yours out? Were you the last ones to pick or first one or what? I was the first one to pick. And, uh, well, I wasn't. But I was supposed to be the first one. Yeah. So anyway, I got ready to go pick the dogs. Debbie went with me. And I said, okay, I'm going to let you have my first pick. And she's like, well, you won't keep it anyway. You know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, Debbie looked at all the puppies. And Freck was in there. And he had, like, freckles down between his eyes in the <laughs> yeah. blaze. And yeah. she said, I want this one. So that's where the name came from. And she wanted to name it Freckles. And I said, that's not a male's name. We will not <laughs> name it Freckles. So, yes, that's where Freck came from. Yeah. She made the first pick. Mark made a pick. Then I picked a red dog that looked like Wild Man. Yeah. And, uh, Called that one Wild Son. Yes, sir. Yeah. Wild Son. Her yeah. Beagle Champion, State Savannah Wild Son. Mm -hmm. And then Kristen got Flame. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Mark kept the fifth one. Mm-hmm. And that's where it went. Yeah, so Kristen, let's talk about Flame a little bit in this litter here. She was kind of a blue ticked up little dog. Yeah, I wasn't red like. No, she. I think there was only one other blue tick in the litter besides her. Um, I think he called her a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I always wanted a blue tick, and when when I got the opportunity, I was like, absolutely, that's the one I want. To yeah. Give me the blue tick. <laughs> yeah. 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 So let's talk a little bit about were they early starters? What uh, with that litter or these two specifically? We started all five of them at the same time mm -hmm. uh, in a running pen. Yeah. And immediately when they come out of the running pen at six months old, we put them in the wild. And I remember very clearly the first night we took them to the wild, flame jumped the first rabbit. Really? Sure did. And uh, And I'm sure you were along that time. Yep. yep. Absolutely. And they, they started running. And at that time, uh, Brett kind of had a little yodel mouth, you know. and they come through and running, and you know the sun dog had a big, big, big ball mouth. And uh, anyway, we watched them run and run, and it, it just went from there. You know? yeah. But yeah, they ran first, first time in the wild out yeah. of the pen, jumped their own rabbits. We didn't even have an old dog with them. Yeah. So, uh, Kristen, at this time, you you already had a couple other dogs, did you not? You had that. What was uh, what were a couple of the other dogs before uh, Flame that you had? Well, I, particularly, I ran uh, Blitz, my Blitz, Blitz that, male yep, money man. Yep. Um, he he was the one that I was pushing the most at the time. And you actually had some success with him? Yeah, I, I won. Uh, I, I placed him in the Nationals one time, yep. third. And then yep. I also uh, had chased All-Star Series with him a couple times. He, he yeah. qualified for the All-Star yeah. Chase a few times. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so now you've got Flame here, whatever got him started and everything. Do you guys remember the first hunts you put him in? As a matter of fact, I... Went to their records, both of the dogs, both of the both of them that I see where they got their first win at was in March of 2016. Both happened to be at High Point, North Carolina, which is your club. Uh, do you guys remember that day? Very clearly, and it was a state hunt. That was a state hunt. Yes. And was this their first hunt ever? Yes. Both of them. Yep. Yes. So two litter mates. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we were and we was in the winter's back together. Both in the winter's back. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of that's pretty neat, really, if you look back on it. You know, so long ago or whatever, but that's kind of kind of neat. Remember how your hunt went that day, being Flames first one? Yeah, uh, we went. I went to a spot we we run pretty regularly, and uh, we didn't have a, a bunch of running, but uh, she she actually jumped the only rabbit that we that we scored on. And, in the uh, winter's pack or in the uh, first round? In the first round. In the first round. Yeah, yeah. and then I. Uh, I believe I, I think I fit, I placed first in the winners pack. I'm pretty sure if I'm correct. Uh, I was I was first in the winners pack. I'm, I'm Jeff's to winking here. He's gonna I, let you I, have I, that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't remember that specifically, but I, I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, we'll see what he says. He he might have a rebuttal. <laughs> um, but she uh, I mean, she just went out there and just did her job. I yeah. mean, she she hunts. She hunted so hard when she was 
I mean, when, when he first started, you know, she was hunting like a grown dog at six months old. I yeah. think I think they were eight. Were they eight months old when they got their first win? Seven, uh, seven months old. Seven months old when yeah. they got their first win. So both of them. Yeah, well, that's kind of a strong suit. That was kind of a strong suit. Just a good, hard hunting dog, wasn't it? Absolutely. I've heard a lot of guys I mean, say that. I don't remember that I ever hunted with her. I may have, but I'm not positive. I, I don't. But, yeah. I don't think so. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. But that was. I mean, for me, that for mm-hmm. her, that that was one of her best attributes about her is that she didn't matter how she felt or where you turned her loose, yeah. she was going to go find a rabbit. Yeah, yeah. And then how you remember any of your hunts on that? Yeah, uh, Dad and I discussed the morning. Uh, one, you know, we wasn't real big on hunting real young dogs in a trial. How how old would they have been here at this point? Greg's eight years old right now. Yeah, this but it, um, in March of they, uh, 2016. They was seven months old. Seven yeah. months old. Ooh, geez, they were just barely yeah, we been so. running two months. <laughs> They'd only been out of the pen. You got month. all these other hounds, and you're yeah. running these seven-month-old pups in the state hunt. They're yeah, impressive. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, they was doing good, and uh, and that's what Dad said. And I said, well, I just want to try him. If you don't do no good, you know, we, I just want you to see him. He had not got to see him go. And uh, so... I committed to Debbie that when she picked him, that if I seen the ability in him, that I would put 100% time into the, yeah. to that hound yeah. and give him every opportunity. So, you know, that was an early age and a lot of pressure on him. But I put him out there. It was a tough morning. As Kristen said, we didn't have no big scores. Uh, he break was always very tight, and uh, he didn't get – Sucked in on some of the minuses. Then we jumped the rabbit. He did not jump the rabbit. I think I struck second. And we scored a line. He was first on the line. And that's how the morning cast in. Yeah. And uh, then we went into the winner's pack where uh, I think we had a crooked judge, but I finished second. In it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. But they finished one, two. Yeah. Out well, of they would have had a non-hunting judge. In the yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. Know, and won. it was uh, four dogs, and, yeah. you know, we was one, two. So yeah. It was on from there. Yeah, and well, you can't both Dad them. told me that day, he said, put the time in this hound like you said you was going to do, mm-hmm. and he's going to do things because I had won a lot with Wild Man, and probably we retired Wild Man way too young. But he's produced so much yeah. for me, I can't say I made the wrong decision. Yeah. But uh, he said he'll do as good, if not better, than Wild Man, and he has. You know, so you were talking about these dogs being young here at this point. You kind of saw that. Do you Could you see at that age already that they were going to be better than average, or did you have a good feeling about that? Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, I always said, you know, and Wild Man has been a, one of the top – three stud dogs me and dad's had in 30 some years but i felt in like i said his record speaks for itself he won he's won a lot but i felt like he threw better pups than he was yeah and i seen that at a young at a very young age because when he was at a very young age he was nowhere near as impressive as these two pups mm-hmm. and the wild son pup you know i i did some winning with him he was my pick, but the more we hunted them together, the more these two shine. Yeah. And Sun yeah. kind of got put on the back burner, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's the way, that's the way it rolls. And yeah. Everything Dad said and everything, you know, I committed to, yeah. we done. Yeah, so, and, and like, uh, for me anyways, you, you get a good one. A good one will make you hunt. And I'm sure that was probably it, the case here. It put the it put the fire in my belly. I mean, I I, I loved Blitz. Obviously, I, I done I had a lot of success with him. But like, for Flame was different. I mean, she just she made me want to go. Like mm-hmm. she made me more competitive. And and I felt like when I turned her loose, I had a chance. Yeah. Did you see a lot of similarities in the two pups? They were a lot alike. Uh, a lot alike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, both of them was very tight at a young age. Uh, Flame at one point. You know, I felt like jumped more rabbits than Preg did. He probably had a tad a, more foot than she did, but consistently all day long they would they'd be right there battling mm-hmm. with the older hounds. Yeah, gun hunting, whatever they was them two was yeah. right there in the in the mix. Yeah. Well, then, so we we were talking kind of about that first hunt they were in the state hunt there in March at, at High Point. Uh, it takes thirty seven Grand Hunting Beagle Champion wins to make Hall of Fame. 
So 37 for Flame came a little before Freck, and it again came at High Point, North Carolina, the qualifier in February of 21. You remember that hunt? Oh, yeah. Um, I hunted her in the qualifier, and, and I won with her. And I the world hunt, I remember the the year before, we had announced the, the numbers, and I and then we changed the point system, and I looked up the point system, and I wasn't going to hunt her any hunts except the qualifier to try to qualify for the world. And I knew that she needed one more, and I, no one knew that but me. Like, mm -hmm. I, I was like, well, he knew. But, you know, we, we were like, we, I'm going to get it. And I went, I, she, got her, she got her last win, and I was like, man, that would be awesome if she went in first. And yeah. then, then when the, you did the tally, and she was the first one, and I was like, I got it before everybody else did. You were, you're exactly <laughs> right. You know, that was, that was the very first one. Yeah, and, and that can't be taken away. Yeah, it, it can't. You know, and I think at the time, you know, at the time that we have a couple other dogs that just did so much winning that are also now in the Hall of Fame, there's not very many, you know, Chief and Mongo and a couple of those, you know, and I think a lot of her, at least I was kind of fixed to that, and I just hadn't didn't realize you had that many wins on Flame. All of a sudden, it's like, Flame's the first one. I'm like, holy cow, are you kidding me? But that will forever be the first uh, Hunting Beagle uh, Hall of Fame, and uh, none other than Kristen Bundy. That's pretty. That's pretty neat, actually. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I know the year that she chased points that I, I ran All Star Series. She had twenty eight cast wins yeah. that year, and when when it popped up and said thirty seven, I was sitting there going, "All right, I, I think I'm close here." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, we've had over the years, we've had several uh, ladies that have been pretty successful. You know, and and. You know, Vicki Bassett is one that's it's been around for a long time, but there's been other women that have kind of been around for a couple of years or whatever. But uh, you have fast become one of those staples, and and not just not just that, but you're good at it. You're you're good at it. You uh, you're in all aspects of it. Well, thank you. I I can't take any uh, credit for anything other than I've just had really good people to teach what? me the. Uh, teach me the ropes and then you know i enjoy i love the dogs yeah. so that that's that's what makes it fun for me and, and just so i don't lose this train of thought i'm just going to ask you what why why hunting beagles well um where does that come from so you? my grandpa obviously he hunts and i grew up around it but i didn't hunt because i was the only granddaughter and uh when when i met ashley jeff's niece uh she invited me to the club down there where in high point and I went and just spectated, you know, mm -hmm. the guys running. And I was like, man, this is really cool. You know, yeah. how, how did how do I learn to do this? And my grandpa's, you know, he's like, well, you like this? And he's he's not, you know, he's crazy. Like, you, you seriously like this? So just started going with him. And then I hunted that first youth hunt. He sent me out there with his old dog, and I won my cast. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I won my cast. And then he was like, we're going to Tennessee in the morning, get in the truck. <laughs> so <laughs> it was on from there. It was, yeah. it was over with. I'm competitive anyways. I mean, I want to win, yeah. uh, obviously, but uh, I, I just, I love the dogs. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's the best part for me. Yeah. I like to be outdoors. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. Well, I know there's a lot of women that look up to you, you know, and it's, it's, it's just pretty cool. It really is. So well, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so that was flame at the qualifier. She finished in February of 21, got her 37th. That put her in the hall. Uh, then, uh, I looked at the records for this second date on Freck and again, number 37 came at the qualifier one year later, same club. So <laughs> there's just a lot of similarities with these two dogs. Uh, Freck just, uh, one year later is what, uh, qualifier. You remember that hunt, Jeff? Yeah, I remember it very well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, you know, the year before was, you know, when you seen me in Michigan and, you know, Debbie was handling Freck. Same, you know, she had a ton of wins that year, yep. 27, 28 yep. wins, yep. Uh, you know, which was a year later. But, uh, yeah, I remember the morning, you know, actually Freck was the high-scoring dog and the, and in the qualifier. And, uh, you know, he had a big score that morning, and he really run and looked like, in my opinion, a Hall of Fame dog should look. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, and uh, he did the job, Yeah. you know. So, yeah. Yes, I remember very well. Yeah, so let's talk about, so we kind of talked about the start of the dogs when they got first started in competition, kind of when they earned this title, but let's talk about some of the uh, successes you've had in the in, in between all that uh, for Flame. Let's start with you, Kristen. Uh, I know you ran in the junior series with her. That was one of the things you had uh, had some success with her. A yeah, lot of it, actually. Yeah, she well, she started mm -hmm. out that year that she got her first cast win. You know, I wasn't planning on pushing a seven-month-old puppy, but we got to Nationals. And she she won and placed uh, third in the yeah. in the and yep. registered that I remember year. Remember that. And then that kind of bumped her up in the points, you know. And then we're sitting there looking like, well, maybe we need to we need to push her. 
So we kept pushing her, and she she had a really great year. I mean, she won a lot that year, but she came up a little short. She she lost by five. Um, she was second in the juniors that year. But then 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 I didn't really push her after that for a while. And I bet you were competing in the East, right? Yeah, in we were the in the Eastern region. So yeah. you would have had like Bill McFarland and probably pushing I, a young dog. I was actually hunting against Dude Bennington. Yeah, with yeah. uh. I, uh what was her name? Uh, a McFarland pup. Yeah, I'm it was sure. a it was trigger a Mc, pup, yeah, it was a trigger pup. I, yep. I know for a fact. I, I don't remember her name right off the top of my head. Uh, Halo, I believe Halo, it was Halo. Yep, yep. Yeah, I believe it was Halo. Um, but when we waited, you know, I, I I held her back a little bit, I guess. When we got, you know, on, I hunted her, but didn't really like push her, push her. But mm -hmm. then turn around in 2018, and and she, she ended up placing uh, third in the grands at nationals, and I pushed her from there. Uh, on until you know she she won the all-star series that year yeah. and she had a really great year that year i mean she won a lot virginia state hunt north carolina state hunt she had she had a great year yeah. uh, just she was so consistent I mean, that's just how she won I mean, mm. flame just was always flame yeah and probably the other ones was the for me the notable stuff is she placed in the eliminator three years in a row like she was ninth or eighth, tenth, and then third the next year. Oh yeah, and, and that was her her last eliminator. Yeah. She was third in the eliminator. And the East eliminators have always been huge, big numbers. Yeah, it was, yep. it was a huge hunt. Yep, all full elimination there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, in HBA days, you had her. You you had some. You yeah, had just a lot of events. Really, yeah, for, I mean, she she placed in the grands at the NHBA days, and she's ran NHBA points. She was runner up female in NHBA sectional series two years in a row. Yeah, um, I she just she just would be consistent, you know. And I I'd like to sit here and tell everything she's ever done, yeah, but yeah. those those big ones for me was was those yeah. you know national placings and yeah. and the eliminators and stuff like that. I mean, she was just every every day year in a year out. You know, she was always there. Yeah. She never did place in the world. Um, I won one cast at the world. Her heat cycle seemed to always fall oh, in yeah. the world, so yeah. I hurt her. Is there any one win that you just that is just like the most special to you with with her not really oh yeah uh 100 the last world hunt that she was able to hunt in uh and it was just a cast win yeah. i didn't go any further than the cast win and she was sick and i didn't know it at the time yeah. uh but she caught two rabbits on the cast mm -hmm. and i mean i had some good dogs out there on the cast but she just shut them out like it was just like she came to play and you know she was first she had every first strike but one and actually hunting against the dog that I bred her to, oh, yeah. and he's bad mama jamma. Like yeah. Diesel's the real deal. I was I wasn't expecting to get all in first strikes and, <laughs> and catch rabbits on the same cast. Yeah. But she just she came to play that day, mm. and it was just it was really cool to watch her do what she does. I, I always enjoyed watching her yeah. do her job. Yeah. So uh, Jeff, let's talk about Freck a little bit. Some of those, some of his, uh, some of the things that he's accomplished in between there. Well, like I said, uh, you know, we hunted Freck, but, you know, I was running uh, all age with Rose and, you know, just had finished up with Wild Man, won it back to back two years mm -hmm. in a row. And uh, so Freck was getting hunted a lot, but he wasn't getting hunted a lot at the hunt. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it was probably uh, 19, 2019. I mean, he had placed at some state hunts and he uh, he placed year flame was uh eighth at the eastern eliminator freck was uh fourth uh and then he placed sixth at the eastern eliminator uh, the year flame placed third mm -hmm. and uh you know then with some pretty big wins uh you know he always done well at the state hunt so he won south carolina state hunt uh you know before the south carolina clubs went away uh which was really in the heat hard dry part of the country to, mm -hmm. to win in. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, opposite to Flame, Breck never had much luck at the National. But every world, you know, he would, every world he was in that we tried to qualify him, uh, he always went a cast or two or get up near the finals and get in the finals. And then just last year, you know, at seven years old, he finished fourth and uh hopefully this year he can win it yeah <laughs> with a better handler than he had last year <laughs> yeah hello Alan Alan Newby. Newby. <laughs> <laughs> hey you know that was just last year yeah. uh at the waynesburg pennsylvania you know and, and uh, you couldn't make it but uh 
Alan did a pretty good job with it. I know there was. I, th I know he he was probably the the favorite going into the finals there. Everybody was kind of rooting for him probably because of the situation with yeah. where you couldn't be there. You were kind of uh, down on uh, health wise a little bit, but your buddy Alan uh, came through for you. Yep. Yeah, uh, it wasn't really shocking to me, but you know when the, all everything went down, you know Alan called me up and he said, "Hey, you know if." Uh, Debbie and you are let me take Breck because I'd already qualified him before I knew yeah. anything about what was going on. But uh, he said, I'd like to come and get him a month, month and a half and run him. And uh, Alan always really liked Breck. He drew him a lot, uh, you know, and he, he seen him in the field uh, competing against him. And, you know, Debbie and I talked about it and, uh, you know, Breck had never stayed nowhere but our house. Mm -hmm. And he was going to be gone for a month and a half, so or, you know, about two months total. So we agreed to do it, and uh, I met Alan and gave him Freck, and, you know, he was really super, called me weekly with updates, and the more he hunted him, he was like, man, you know, this dog can grub, he gets down, and he's, he's consistent every day I hunt him. He, yeah. He's just, he hunts hard, he's fast, and... You know, as age, he developed more of a nose. Mm -hmm. You know, he started jumping a lot more mm -hmm. rabbits and uh, not as tight as he once was. And that's what hurt him in the championship. You know, even though he jumped a rabbit, he couldn't, you know, seen, couldn't run it, took a mm -hmm. minus, you know. Yeah. That's the breaks. But yeah. uh, I was at a hunt that I was not at uh, a, a year that that was very a proud moment for someone else to take a dog that, Debbie and I had put so much time in, mm -hmm. and he only knew us the last three or four years as the handlers. Yeah. And uh, to be able to accomplish that, and, you know, a lot of times dogs don't act right for same for you as they do me, you yeah. know. And yeah. uh, But probably the proudest year was 2019 when he won the series, and, and you know, Debbie did 90% of the handling, and uh, I got beat several times not every weekend by him but uh I'm just like michigan you know i'm running actually the same cross second litter the coco female and i was chasing duke Bennington for third in the points if yeah. you remember yeah and you know i go out with nate and the butlers and win my cast and have a good cast pull it out at the end and i'm smiling but i come back in and Breck and Debbie had blew my score out of the water. So, you know, again, he just, he was a big hunt dog, and yeah. uh, he still is, but this will be his last win, lose, or draw. He he will never be in another field trial. Now, yeah. he'll be ready when gun season's yeah. there. He'll be the first dog in the truck with his daddy. Yeah. So, well, hey, that's where I was going to go segue from this. Let's just talk about rabbit hunting. I'm, just, You know, we talked about these dogs being in the trials, but you're rabbit hunting these same dogs, aren't you? Absolutely. Every weekend. Yep. Yep. That was my go-to gun dog. My, yeah. All both of them dogs. You don't want to leave them at home. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, I think we've uh, covered enough here. We could talk probably. There's. I'm sure you have a lot of stories, you know, and a lot of stories you could tell and talk about a lot of different hunts. But uh, I don't want to hold you guys up too long. I really appreciate it and just want to congratulate you for uh, the accomplishments you've had with these. I'm sure Jeff, as a breeder, uh, it's got to be very satisfying to have such success with uh litters of dogs like this and, you, and you've you've seen it from your dad on down you know had a lot of successes and and uh chris and you as well you know just with the the dogs you've had and 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 i'm sure flame has been up there at the top of your list really and and unfortunately you re recently lost her i guess you know that's got to be kind of tough you know but yeah I, I lost her a year ago, August, uh, yeah. this past August, mm -hmm. but I, I was fortunate enough to get a litter of pups out of her before yeah. she passed. So they've been, they've been good to me so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got, uh, still, still got some flame blood Absolutely. to play with. Absolutely. That yeah. should be in the finals tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hoping for, hoping for top 16 tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. There you go. And we'll just leak it out here. We're at the McVeigh uh, hunt and you've got bad company in the championship yes. here. So yep. there's a, uh, there's flame still, uh, Still shining through, I guess, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, you guys got any final thoughts here before we close it out? No, I'd just like to, you know, thank everybody that supported Breck and and me uh, through the whole process from Dad on down. Uh, again, I give, you know, Debbie's the owner of Freck, and 
I was just lucky enough to do a lot of the handling and training, but even back to uh, the dogs in the past on the female and the male side, all the opportunity that was be able to make this cross and, and make it as powerful as it is to get two litter mates in the top four in the Hall of Fame. I'd, I'd like to say thanks to the dudes like Jeff that gave me opportunity. I mean, Jeff and Mark gave me opportunity to have a, an awesome dog that I'll probably never have another like in my life. So, I mean, they took a chance with me and they've helped me get, get to where I am now as a handler and, and a trainer. So, I, without that, I wouldn't be there. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good stuff right there from Kristen and, and Jeff. And hope you enjoyed that interview. They're always good to uh, sit down and talk about dogs and and as you could hear, both of these dogs have, have meant a lot to them and their breeding programs. Obviously, the, or the Stacys have had their Outlaw Mountain breeding program going for a long time. And uh, they have a couple litter mates like this in the Hall of Fame already has got to be uh, pretty. It's pretty impressive and uh, pretty satisfying, I'm sure, as a breeder for Mr. Jeff. So, uh, But uh, moving on to our second dog to earn the uh, Hall of Fame title was a world champion. Uh, if you know anything about uh, hunting beagle formats, you will have heard the name Trevor McQueen or the McQueen boys. There's three of them, three brothers. Their kennel name is 3MC, which obviously stands for three McQueen brothers. Uh, but one of their dogs they've done a whole lot of winning with was a dog named Chief. He is a world champion. He's a performance champion, grand, uh, grand hunting beagle champion, national grand champion, as it were. Now this dog's just won about everything there is to win and and uh has had quite a an extensive history in the uh hunting beagle format but uh so i had a chance to sit down with trevor and we talked about chief here's trevor and i talking about that well hey trevor how are you today good how are you good 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 got you finally got you cornered down to sit here or sit down and talk about this hall of fame dog you got yeah life's been uh life's been awfully busy yeah <laughs> yeah you got a little one now a little one not yeah. much dog running but a lot of uh a lot of dadding <laughs> yeah so uh we're recording this actually at the mcveigh memorial so we're sitting close to the road here so we see here's some traffic going by so hopefully that's not picking up too much but anyways uh yeah, you're not really. I saw you running a dog this morning, but here in the late round this afternoon, you're you're you had the baby out in the stroller. Yeah, nope, not that's, even here this morning. That's something. I, I got it a couple casts. I met him at the interstate, got them dropped off, and I went to the doctor's office. And yeah. uh, Tracy and I just came by to yeah. to visit and make sure there's plenty of spots to go to. Yeah, well, you got a little baby, and things kind of change a little bit, don't they? Uh, a lot. Yeah, I, yeah. I always thought the. I always thought winning was the most important thing. That's that's why we all <laughs> yeah. came. But yeah, uh, oh nope, all the dogs are at the house. Yeah. So well, this in this episode we are talking about Hall of Fame dogs, and uh, man, we have uh, we've had this out for several years now, and it, I think it's a little tougher than people thought it would be. It's yeah. not a. There's still we've only got six or eight, I guess about eight of them now that have made the Hall of Fame. But uh, uh, Chief is one of those. So we're talking about uh, world champion. He's got uh, pretty uh, pretty lengthy titles on him now, but uh, let's talk. Let's back up and go back to you, bred Chief. He was off of uh, one of your first dogs that you got uh, that you had, Cooperstown, right? Yep. That's Tell correct. us a little bit about how the, how you got started with that. Uh, this is is it's crazy, but uh, we always kind of gun hunted a little bit. But I got crushed in a coal mine. Uh, I got injured in a coal mine very seriously. In 2013, uh, January of 2013, and it was going to be months before I could do anything, but uh, we could load dogs up in a dog box, and it was still rabbit season, and Tracy would drive me around, and uh, we could listen to dogs run, and not being able to do hardly anything other than sit uh, with my hip, that was, that was kind of how it started. Then I thought... Hey, if I'm going to run dogs all the time, somebody mentioned about something about one of these goofy field trials, and I thought, well, I guess we'll go try it. And yeah, I, I literally, as they say, I guess that's all she wrote. Yeah. Has I've uh, been hooked ever since. You know, I remember I was at I don't know if it's NHBA days or one of those where I was actually hunting a dog, and I had a three dog cast, and I think it was Cooper that was in my cast. That, and was. somebody else was handling the Scotty, dog. Yep. Scotty, Scotty yeah. Tedrick. That's it. That's exactly who it was. 
And, you know, I didn't really know you guys then. I guess you were working that day or something, yeah. couldn't hunt the dog or whatever. So that was that was actually Chief's daddy. But, man, most of us that have gotten involved with dogs, we had to, it took us years to do what you and your brothers have accomplished. 3MC is your kennel name. So obviously McQueen. So the three McQueens is where that yep. 3MC comes from. That's kind of a neat kennel name. But uh, so, yeah, that was, uh, but then after that, man, next thing you know, like you said, you're hunting a lot and your dogs are winning. Yeah. it. Uh, it's not supposed to work that way. No, I said the best thing could ever happen to anybody is they go in and they lose about their first 50 casts and uh, they go try a different venture in life. They save a lot of money, but uh, we kind of went the other way. I yeah. Guess. So there was Cooperstown, and then his mama was 3MC Chloe. Now, Chloe was kind of your one of your startup yeah, emails, that was, right? Yeah, uh, we had uh, Cass's, TNT's Cass Frass, her dad, uh, Digger, and Chloe were the two gun dogs we always hunted with. And then when we got Cooper, I said, man, I don't know if he's that fast or our dogs are that slow, but uh, let's try it. And, you know, before they get so old, they can't hunt with their parents. Yeah. And, uh, that was Comet Cooper. Uh, or Comet Chief, that was at Litter. So. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you've told me already before that Chloe was actually a, a good rabbit dog. She was a very good rabbit dog. But at, by the uh, time you started competing around, you had other dogs to run, and she just kind of got put on the back burner when it was, comes to the trial. Was never entered in a hunt. Yeah, never entered in a <laughs> hunt. Ne never entered in a hunt. She would have probably had all kinds of titles, too. If I, you had, I, I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm thankful that we had her. Yeah. I mean, she's produced, well, I mean, a lot more than a lot yeah. more than Chief. She's produced... Yeah. Uh, a lot of so now you're you're actually not you i don't think most people would call you experienced uh, beaglers at this point still you've got this uh litter of pups now off of cooperstown and chloe which includes chief in the litter and you had another one what nails tough you called yeah, him i guess yeah, and maybe was, it was and he was younger yeah yeah you know we kind of started with Cass and sid that was a different cross yeah. different same same yeah. cross different litter yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we kind of started with Cass and sid and i i guess those two poor females that's what we cut our teeth with and then yeah. I guess Chief and Comet were kind of the next generation yeah. and then Tough. And uh, we bought Kane from Brian Mead there in yeah. the middle. And uh, we have just been very blessed. I mean, yeah. a lot of a lot of people would have loved to have had those dogs, yeah. I, mean, I guess. But uh, we were very fortunate. Yeah. So, okay. So here's Chief in the litter of these pups. How? Why Chief? Why did you keep him? Or how did you, de how did you decide you're going to keep this? Well, well we this had no guy. kids at the time. And Tracy was with the pups every day. I mean, I bet Tracy spends an hour and a half with the pups every day. Uh, she could tell you what direction they went, who went the furthest, uh, who was investigative, who was the first one to the food bowl. And uh, we just kind of have always picked our pups from personalities. And yeah. uh, that one that one got to stay. Yeah. Uh, when Hammer and uh, the Tickled Pink Dog were born, their pups out of chief. Uh, I was keeping a female before they were born. That was it. I was keeping one female. Hopefully it was red. Uh, then Hammer came out. And I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of Cooper, Chief, and Hammer, but you could line them up. Not every dog could pass as the other one. Yeah. As soon yeah. as I saw that, I said, I don't think that one's going anywhere. That hey, one's going to stay. Yeah, I've struggled with that already when I've, we've had pictures of your dogs and had to match them with a name and be like, okay, which one's which here? Yeah. There was yeah. a time when I didn't even know which one was Chief and which one. Yeah. Had. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I have a few notes that I took here. February of 2016, Holmesville, Ohio, is the first cast win record that we have for chief you remember that uh did you hunt the dog somebody else hunted? I, i'm gonna guess that it was probably Corey that hunted him yeah Corey got to hunt him real early uh now don't let him take all the credit i got the dogs ready Corey got to take him to the hunt and then as i continued getting dogs ready i said man you know i kind of really like that i kind of want this uh, one uh yeah i think i think we're gonna switch <laughs> and then shortly after that kane came and uh Josh just kind of really liked Kane, so Corey kind of got uh, whatever yeah. the next dog was. Josh yeah. kind of always hunted Kane or Allen Railing, and and uh, see, Kane's just, a world champion too. In Chief, we'll talk about that. He he also won the world champion and, back to back. Uh, was it not back to back yeah. years? Yeah. Well, which one won it first? Kane. Uh, Kane won. Kane first won it first, and, then and, then, and seventeen, and then Chief won it. In in twenty eighteen, yeah, I so, still remember uh, that very first drop in the in the final cast on that Sunday morning with chief popping across the road there and kind of stuck with that uh 
You remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And and at the end of that track, you probably don't remember this, but uh, when we finally got a rabbit going at the end of that track, he jumped the rabbit and was in last. Yeah. I remember that very vividly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we're kind of jumping ahead here. We didn't his birth date shows in November of twenty fourteen is when, when Chief was born here. So yeah, so in, in uh what do I have? February of twenty sixteen when he got his first cast win, and then he got his thirty seventh grand hunting beagle champion cast win as a grand, thirty seven as a grand in March of twenty twenty one at NHBA days. So do you remember who hunted him there? That would have been me. After after uh, nope 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 nope. I'm wrong there. It wasn't at NHBA days. It was at, at matter of fact, just a regular trial at Gloucester. That's yeah, that would have been. Uh, we were probably still in March, running the but, NHBA yeah. points. I would yeah. say yeah. is is why he was still running. Uh, and after I want to say after about the first eight months of him being in trials, I I kind of pulled the reins back from Corey, and that became. Uh, I don't know how many people have run him other than me at a yeah. trial, actually, yeah. since then. So. He was kind of your dog, really. Yeah. yeah. So he's got another title, Performance Pack Champion. You ran him at Performance Pack back in the day. Yeah, he actually, uh, I believe he has a top 10 in the world. I know he has a top. He uh, did? I know he has a top 10 at, that are nationals. Uh, yeah. I do I do remember that. So. Yeah. So, so you ran him there, and really for that, that's a little bit more conservative style, a dog or whatever, but he did well in that format. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. He, yeah. he didn't gamble a whole lot. Yeah. That's, that's probably what I liked the most about him. Yeah. Well, that was gonna, I was going to ask you, what is it that you like the most about yeah, him? I don't, I, don't like the, I don't like a dog guessing. I mean, when scent and conditions and your pack mates are really good, you can look really good if you're just going to swing and gamble, but yeah. if, you just, if you control the track yourself, you don't have to worry about the others helping. Was there was there ever a time when he would be uh, when he would get in a slump or anything like that? Knock on wood, not really. Not really. He, he never really did. Yeah. Uh, tough did. I mean, I laid tough up for about three months the year that he won uh, the NHBA points. Uh, he just he got in a funk. I, I think I'd taken all the fun out of it for him. But yeah. Chief Chief really never did. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I semi retired him. Then I retired him. Then uh, I think nationals. Final retired yeah, him, but yeah. uh, well, we'll, I, we'll get I, we'll get to that in a minute. But what were some of the what was the first big thing that he won? Do you remember that you considered a big deal for Chief? Chief is the one well, here. you know, it's it. This sounds terrible, but what's big to us now was uh, unimaginable. You know, back when we yeah. started running him, I mean, yeah. we didn't know any better. Heck, if we want a state hunt, uh, <laughs> I think. I actually think at the West Virginia State Hunt, I'm going to say, and he was born in 14, probably in 15, uh, I think he got opposite sex to Cass. Cass was the overall winner of the state show, and Chief was the opposite sex. In the he, show? In the show, and <laughs> I mean, we were, heck, that was, we were tickled to death. And then Cass won the, that hunt also. She won the, the hunt and show that wow. year. And oh. Heck, at that point in time, you could have gave us four world titles, and you know we <laughs> that was as good as it got, we, yeah. as far as we knew. So now you had Kane too. We talked about him. You won the world hunt with him in 2017, and then and then uh, and then Chief. But though they're they kind of they're not the same. They don't they no, don't do not. things the same, do they? No, they're not. They are not the same. And and I learned at a very early age, as much fun as it is to run those two together, if you're going to a field trial. Do not run those two together. <laughs> yeah. it, you just don't. Yeah. Uh, both of them could dominate a pack of dogs, but uh, one would hurt the other one yeah. more than they helped if you were getting ready for a field trial. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, obviously, you kind of cruised to the grand d title. And, and what do you, you had him in? Did you run him much in the All Star series, really? Or did he, you really push him in that? Uh, he got second one year to. I don't know if it was booty, probably ghetto yeah, booty, probably yeah. needs dog. Uh, and then he won it the next year, and then yeah. that was. So, you know, this this episode is kind of about Chief, the Hall of Fame dog. So, obviously, we talked about Kane. You won it in 2017 with him. First time winning the world championship, and that was, uh, um, that was huge. Yeah, we and were then, two and a half years into this, yeah, and I didn't, yeah. I mean, really didn't. Looking back at it now, it probably means more doing that now than it did then. Yeah, that was in Indiana, I remember, LaGrange, Indiana. Yep. And then the next year, the World Finals are in West Virginia. You come back, you got Chief in the lineup. Uh, and here you are in the final cast again with Chief. Yeah. That what was, two back to back? Here with, you got with yeah. Josh Ware and with Alan yeah. Rayleigh. I mean, yeah. two guys that, that we've been all over yeah. the uh, country with. 
And so, good dogs right there too. Yeah, Paris, very. Paris and uh, Storm. Storm, yeah, yeah very yeah. good dogs. Yeah, so. very good dogs. Yeah. So he came out on top there. So now he's a world champion. And then after that, uh, you're still hunting the dog. A lot of guys will kind of lay them, lay them up, start breeding them a lot. Were you breeding him any at that point? Mm, Not really. I actually had refused to breed him uh, until after the world hunt. You know, there's not a whole lot of favorites that end up winning the world hunt. I'm not saying he was the favorite, but was obviously at that point in time one of uh, the, and that was my goal with him yeah. was to win the world hunt. Yeah. I, I knew the dog could do it. I felt the dog deserved to do it. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't want, I didn't want breeding getting in the way of that. So yeah. I had never, we had never bred a female, not even one of our own. Yeah. Uh, until well, you know what? I'm glad you bring hunt. that up really. Cause uh, since you mentioned that, you know, a lot of, or I say a lot of times, Sometimes from the world championship, a dog comes up through there and wins it that really didn't, you might not have really expected it or it hasn't won a whole lot else. But Chief was really early on already. He was a favorite at most any event he was in, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, he was. You could say I mean, that. And and thankfully for that dog, I mean, he was, uh, regardless of where we turn him loose, probably his best trait in my opinion. Uh, no matter the season, the weather, the location, you know, traveled well, traveled well, all of it. it. I turned the same dog loose every time. Yeah. He could get beat any cast he was put in, but I was turning the same dog loose, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what or where, you know, when or where that was. Yeah. And that was important. Yeah. So now you've won the world hunt and, uh, he's getting a little age on him now. That was 2018. Now fast forward after that, he made the, he was in the world finals how many times several he made several uh, he couple. was just at, he was in it once uh the year in caldwell i think he finished fifth fifth yeah yeah i believe uh so you had like two or three in the top 20 that year though i remember it top uh, 16. we had uh three in the top 10 yeah three in the top 10 yeah. yeah and uh they they there were too many rumblings for me about chief so the next year uh we went ahead and ran him again and won yeah. the nhba points yeah. and after that, I said, okay, yep, he's done. And I, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't even running a dog today. Yeah. And I had a real hard time leaving the house and it, leaving him at home. Leaving, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here, and then enter, uh, what, 2021, I guess we've got the clash of champions. Yeah. You get him, uh, was it, you had him qualified last year. Did you qualify him for the first year? First year and, and last year, yeah. Yeah, so two years in a row. Their last, this past year, he made the top 32. Yep. And you had told me you are going to retire him. Now, the finals, the top 32 run on the day before the Nationals on a Thursday. So, uh, he ran there. Uh, he, didn't, uh, he didn't move on after the first round or whatever. Hey, this, we're, talking a, we're talking an aged eight, old dog. Eight-year-old dog. Eight-year-old dog here at this point now. Yeah. Uh, but he's still competitive. You know, still competitive. He's still chief, and he can – you better – Yeah, I mean, it's – Big dogs better gonna, be on their he game. He was going to yeah. be a rabbit dog yeah. regardless. I mean, it was, it was going to take a rabbit dog yeah. to beat him and – well, you told me luck. you told me this clash was going to be his last hurrah. Well, next thing you know, the Nationals the next day, Chiefs in the hunt. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Yeah, it was the the next afternoon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Corey came back and said, "Hey, I think he ran tough. I think." Yeah. He said, "Hey, this dog is is got it. He's done." Well, Tracy still swears that the reason there's not a dog here is because I said Chief was done. But I said, "Man, I had all the." The only dogs I ran, you know, was Sammy with our kid. Yeah. Uh, we had only ran the dogs for the clash. That was it. Didn't yeah. really have time. And yeah. Jeff Duvall ran them a lot for us. Yeah. Uh, it was the only dogs we had ready. So here I am. I, I said, well, I said Chief was done, but he wasn't. So uh, Corey brought him over. And I said, all right, well, I'll hunt him. And that was Friday. That was actually Friday afternoon. And then I said, man, tough boy energy. I'm just taking Chief home. Well, none of us had any luck. I told Tracy, I'm not mad at any of the dogs. They all, I thought, looked good. Yeah. Just no luck. I yeah. mean, just yeah. couldn't win a cast. And yeah. I woke up Saturday morning and rolled over, and I said, I don't, I don't even think I'm taking a dog. I mean, we can't. We just can't win a cast for some reason. She said, just go grab Chief. If you lose with him, at least you won't be mad. And <laughs> I said, you know what? I think I will. Yeah. <laughs> and I, boy, I'm glad she talked me into yeah. it. But. But that's why Chief was at national. Yeah. So so he went on. He got into the championship round on Sunday. Top sixteen for grands. Yeah. Goes on and wins it. Yeah. Now he's a national grand champion. I had to. Uh, I had to kick the side of the box to wake him up 
<laughs> take him Saturday morning. And people will think I'm joking, but but it's I'm not. Uh, when I got him up Sunday morning to go for the semifinals, uh, it got so bad that I had to push his door in uh, on a hinge and smack him in the hind end about three times to wake him up Sunday morning when he came out of the box. Right, you know, normally he's wanting to go to a hunt. You can just tell. Sunday morning he was wanting to stay curled up in a ball, yeah. maybe with a little heater yeah. on him. <laughs> yeah, so there he wins the nationals. He's now he's got that title, world champion and national champion, and just everything else that the dog's done. You know, in our sport, three MC chief is a is a name that is just synonymous to the you know to our program. Done a lot, you know, and there's very few dogs that have done as much as he has. But I guess what you know, I don't want to hold you up here too long. Here we've taken more time than I had told you we would, but. What what's what's next for him? What what do you just rabbit hunting him or what are you doing that, with him? That's now? it. I mean, he's he's breeding a few females too. Uh, I'll breed. Yeah, I mean, I'll breed some of yeah. ours. I'll breed. I guess yeah. if people show up, yeah. uh, we'll breed them. Uh, he'll get to go gun hunt. Uh, yeah, get to run around the house. But I I I believe he's officially seen his uh, his last. Yeah. Hunt, so so do you having had so much success so early on in this amount of time? You know, we're talking about ten years now. Maybe 15 uh, our years. Our first hunt was 15. Two, yeah. Or 2000, late 14 and yeah. then 15. Well, we barely, started going. Ten, barely 10 years. So is the, is there still, is there still that desire there or have you won so much and had so much success that some of that is, is do you still have that desire there, passion there uh, yeah, for it? Or it, it does that kind of go I away? I say yes bit? and no. There yeah. was, uh, there was right up until we had a kid. Yeah. Uh, the, the kid has kind of become a lot more, uh sammy's become a lot more time we really haven't turned a dog loose since the week after nationals yeah uh been spending time with her but that's yeah. good i mean yeah hey tracy went with me uh Corey and josh went with us yeah. a lot you know for five years we went all over the country hey tracy handled a lot of those dogs too yeah. you're talking and about your brothers and josh and and Corey, but yeah. tracy handled a lot too yeah and uh i mean we were a lot of guys are not as blessed you know yeah. for their she traveled with me not only did she yeah. let me go uh, you know, yeah. she traveled with me and, uh, we did that. So it's time to be a dad for a little bit. Here. I don't know if you guys ever compared who had the best cast winning records, but she is, she is, she's, there's nothing to laugh about there. She won her fair no, share. Uh, the Tucker dog. I mean, yeah. she handled clear through to the world, uh, semifinals, yeah. uh, put them in the clash two years, both years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. So. Well, hey, that's kind of the the story in in about twenty minutes on on Chief there, but man, what a probably a, a hound of a lifetime, really. Yeah, for I, a lot I, of people, it would certainly be. Yeah, I, I mean, I truly believe that we were blessed with two hounds of a lifetime, uh, literally at the same exact time. Yeah, I mean, talking about Kane, Kane and Chief. Chief. Yeah, uh, Kane may not get as quite as much credit, but that dog has won nearly as much as yeah. uh, Chief, and yep. I was. I very rarely got the opportunity to even handle the dog. Yeah. So, and we've not even talked about your big uh, clash winner either, you know. <laughs> no, so. and, and that was a pop off. Yeah. Game, so. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. Well, hey, there we go. Uh, Cor or, uh, uh, Trevor, I appreciate you sitting down here with us and talking about Chief a little bit. But, uh, man, what a hound, what a career, what a, what a stamp he put on the, on the hunts here in the Hunting Beagle format in UKC. And, and, I'd say he'll be a dog that's going to be remembered for a lot, a lot of years for sure. Well, I appreciate it. I, I hope he is. I think he has earned that. So yep. we appreciate it. Yep. Well, thanks a lot and congratulations. All right. Thank you. Alan, we both had Dogtra Pathfinder 2s now for a little while. What do you think about yours? I'm liking mine. One of the things I had the opportunity to now download a map of an area where I did not have service. And I've used it there, and it has worked flawlessly. I love it. Yeah, I love the crystal clear maps. I love that I never lose reception on my dog's collars anymore. Highly recommended by me as well. Dog Trip Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar of UKC. Yeah, so there you go. There's uh, That chief has certainly left his mark in the, in the, uh, in the breed, in the format. Uh, anybody that has ran with Chief, uh, well, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of people talk pretty highly of him. Uh, but uh, the next uh, dog, the number three dog to earn the title, was another world champion and another dog that has just done so much winning over the years. Uh, 
uh, and that is Dagestein Sir Mongo. It's a dog that was born in 2015. He's off the two national champions uh, uh, that uh, Owen owned. Dagestein's Big Brutus Balls is the sire who is a national champion. And then he come, his mama is also a national champion, a dog owned by Brian Mead named Hard Pumping Winnie. So, uh, but yeah, and uh, uh, oh, Brian and Owen are, uh, they co-own Mongo. But uh, again, just like Chief and, and the others, you know, if you're familiar with the format, the name Sir Mongo is, uh, is a well-known name in the format. But uh, here's Owen and I talking about Mongo's accomplishments. Eliminator winner, all-star winner, juniors, overall, all-age, world champion, Hall of Fame, Sir Mongo, Owen D'Agostine. Man, what a hound. What a dog. <laughs> You've ran some good ones in your time. Brutus' his daddy was a good one. His mama, Winnie, was a national champion. Both of them were. Where do you, uh, when did you, when did you get the dog? You raised him as a puppy, did you not? Yep, I got him from Meads at six weeks, and he came up there. I had one from the last letter, let her slip through to Ryan Young. That was a mistake. That was Daisy, she, wasn't it? Lady. 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 See, I, she I ended forget up that she was one of those, too. Yep. Yeah, she won the McVeigh, but I brought him home. He was a house dog for over half his life. He's, uh, I call him half human, but he's better than most humans. So he is my buddy. So I, when did you, when did you figure out that he had, he was a special dog? Uh, Early on already? He, he was a quick starter, pretty quick, but really about the time he hit two. My dogs have this thing at two where they really, really start kidding, yeah. putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And about two, I knew I had some, even, even he won the juniors, but I, Knew there was more in him, young. Still made a lot of mistakes, beating himself more than another dog beating him. And he, with age, figured yeah. all that out. What was, do you remember his first ever cast win or first win he I put on? I think it was at Red House. I think it was oh, at yeah. Red House. Yeah. Out of all the places. Yeah. <laughs> started, started where it began. Yeah? Yeah. And then finished, uh, it was last year, I guess. Last when he Mountain City. Well, Mount I ran him in the clash, but yeah, last win was at the regional Mountain City. Yeah, and yeah. you handled him at both of those, yes. first and the last. Yes. Yeah. Did, uh, I know a couple other guys handled him, but yes. you handled him in most of his wins. Yes. Yeah. He. Um, I was, no, I had to, I had people help me get him there yeah. and when I couldn't make it. That year I was pipeline 18 through 20. I, I did have a lot of help. The year that he won the world, Ryan, Ryan had him for probably three months, and I got him back a couple of weeks before. And what was a little what was his first big win? Was it the was it the junior all star? Yeah, yeah, the juniors, the, the, ju the juniors. When he he did that, and it, the coolest part about all that was Booty won the all age, and he he won the the juniors two two full brother and sisters. Just different letters. I thought that was just pretty just, neat. That sucker is just stout. What he is, he is built to run. He, he is, was. He, he, he was. He was born to run. That's he loved it. What was the what? What's the best thing you liked about him? Even when all the odds were against us, he'd still find a way. He, and it wasn't an easy path. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He he won a lot of hunts, a lot of casts like that. Yes. Didn't he? Yes. He he was special. I. It was fun. Say he um, was. He's what nine now? Yeah, be nine, nine be nine in January. Nine years old, and he's probably he could probably still put the smack down on a lot of hounds it, it, today. It still. will piss you off the first two hours of him running young dogs out of him, and you think you got something with them, and then the old dog ain't been out in a month. <laughs> comes out and beats on him a little bit, but his his gas tank ain't what it was. Yeah, feet, been having a lot of feet problems, pads running out wear, and on that, but. Yeah, he's done his thing, and I've really enjoyed him. So you had old Brute. Brute was probably your first big, big time home. He absolutely. was. How does he compare to his daddy? Did you see any similarities there? Similarities. Brute was probably a touch better jump dog, touch better jump dog. But on the, and I'm not saying night and day difference, but on the run and then I've 
just ain't seen many that can stretch a pack like Mongo can and and have it and yeah. keep going and not want to lose, go back to the dogs. He would just snake his way and keep on going. Yeah, I've seen him several times out there. It's just, he's just There's nothing like watching him run through the pines in Tennessee, though. Favorite, <laughs> absolutely, all time. I know you like I that pick. place. That's where I go. See, you speaking Love of it. pines, you know, I run a hair up in the in the pines up in the, in the cedar pines up north there, and I've always thought any time I've been up there, I, I've thought it a bunch. I'd like to see that old dog run up it, there. Somewhere. It would be something, and everyone said the same thing about brute, but I, I don't even when I'm hunting around the house, I don't move. I follow the dogs even yeah. two o'clock in the morning. I'm within normally a hundred yards of them, coyotes and everything, and. You go to the northern country. You, there's a lot of other factors of yeah. predators and stuff. I, I, that's the only thing that scared me off. They're Seem, bred to do it. Yeah, but. seems like he's won just about everything. You know, the one that he never did win was the national grand at at, uh, at the national. But he's been in the final pack twice. twice. Yeah. Yes, third and fourth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But hey, you know everything else. Everything else he's won the world championship. What was that like to win the world championship with that dog? It was it was great because he won the the national runoff that. Let's week talk about that forward. for a second. That you know that was twenty twenty. Yes, twenty twenty. Yeah. So that was the COVID year. So we usually have our runoff in the spring at the nationals or before the nationals. Yep. We have that runoff in COVID. We couldn't do it. Yep. Nationals everything got shut down. Na- yeah, everything was shut down, and uh, nationals actually happened. No, the world. Let me see. How nationals it, was canceled. Nationals was canceled. You're world right. hunt was the only big hunt. World right hunt. So we still haven't had this national or the the runoff. All- runoff. So we're having it in the day before the world Thursday. hunt starts. Yep. So he runs. How many rounds in the Nationals? Two rounds. Two rounds in the runoff. Two rounds in the runoff. And then he has to run Friday two rounds in the world hunt. Yep. He or went, one, he, one and then that's one right. on Friday, that's, three on Saturday, and then one on Sunday. I think he ran six rounds, 90-minute rounds. And you're talking about a stout dog. The odds in his – odds are against him again. You know, he's, he's run a day, two more rounds than any other dog at this event, and he still pulls it off. Is the craziest part about that is Brute did something similar. He won the national runoff when when it was the right time in April. He won the national run. It was an all star series back then. Yeah. Or state race. It was called yeah. a state race then. And then he won that and then got second to Mongo's mom winning. Meads dog at the, yeah. in the national that year. Got second. But I remember when he won that. I just thought, man. You know, you could tell the dog was tired. Yeah. Oh, But well, he yeah. was, that dog has heart. He, that, uh, he can be – some days you just look at him and you think he's just going on with emotions, and then there's sometimes when he flips that switch. And it was it was a fun weekend. It was hard to watch, hard to watch the final because I was working. Uh, I went to the runoff, and Turner never had him a day in his life and takes him to the world and does that with him. Smoked many packs of cigarettes watching that final, <laughs> listening to that final cast. Yeah, it was hard. That was hard. But after it was good. But yeah. it, it was not easy. Yeah. Not easy watching when you're normally the guy that's behind the dog. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, the Hall of Fame, that's a total of 50 cast wins to get that. And that's a bunch of cast wins yes. when you look at it. You know, Long it's, time. It's, it's, it's harder than a lot of people think it might be. And it's, back then, that was before the double headers yep. and, and all that. And mm-hmm. it was loser. Lose yeah. or go home, really. Yeah. You win, keep going. So but as much as that dog has won and everything, there's a there's a there's a dog that deserves to be in the hall. Everything he's done. Everybody knows Sir who Sir Mongo is. What are you still nine years old now? He's, he's still rabbit hunting he, him a little bit. He is a gun dog deluxe. He yeah. always the first one I grab. Yeah. He will be till the day he dies. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh uh, you've got a couple of dogs that you're hunting off of him yes. now that are doing really well for you. You're still winning. Yes. We're here at the World Hunt this year, and I see you got Breeze through in the first round already. Yep. Misty got through as well. Yep. Uh, so uh, do you have any other male dogs that you're liking off of him or just kind of sticking I'm, with these females right now? I'm female heavy, but I have some crosses I'm going to do this summer, mm-hmm. maybe early spring that I'll, I'll – my wife asks me that all the time when we get another Mongo. I said, well. I don't, those don't come around every day, but, and, uh, so hopefully we can work on that this summer. Is that, 
in two years I'll have one, but yeah. till now I got to run females. Are you gotta, breed, are you breeding them quite a bit? Or yeah, I, yeah. I just had a litter that turned five weeks old today, and uh, have two dogs bred. I don't know if they took yet, but they should be coming. And then I have it'll yeah. be. I'd say we we should double what he's got on the ground right now here yeah. in the last few years. Where do you go when you have a dog like that? You know, Brutus is one. You know, then you got Mongo. Where do you are those your yardsticks, or how do you, how do you? Yeah, I'll, I'll always, Brutus will always be the dog that I compare everything to. Mm -hmm. That's the dog in my breeding program that I'm yeah. trying to replicate. And oh. If they can be better than him, that's that's great. Yeah. They, in my heart, they won't be. Yeah. So, so what's, one for him, we wouldn't be talking. Yeah, so yeah. what's what's next for for Mongo? Just, just being a rabbit dog, I guess. It, we, the plan was to already have him in the house, so in the winters we definitely bring him in. And he gets couch life, and he, he should be full time house dog, but I can't have two house dogs. I can't have black and white hair laying on the couch and on the bed. Yeah. I just can't bring myself to do it, yeah. even though I should. But yeah, well, how old were you when you hunted your first hunt? I was twelve. Twelve. Twelve years. Remember old. that hunt? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Where Red, was house. That at? Red house. Red house. Red house. Red house. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely, and I was twelve. I, Milton was the a big beagle club then. Back then, Shoals, I know Shoals every year would win the award for most what whatever at award. The yes, yep. at, entries whatever at the nationals. Yes, whatever entries yep. entries at the nationals. Members, that was like one members. of the biggest beagle clubs around. Yep. And you look around now down south, there's really no more yeah. no more clubs. Yeah. It's kind of once you get past Flatwoods, yeah. really up until Mitch's club, yeah. they really start coming yeah. north and. Jacob Coons is the closest club to me, so yeah, yeah. So fading out a little since bit. Since you're tw since you've been twelve years old, you've won a lot of a lot of hunts over the years. A lot of time. Or it's been pretty good to you. Over. Yeah, yeah, it has. <laughs> I I enjoy it. I, yeah. You still have that. You still have that same drive and passion you did. I do, but I don't have the time to yeah do, do what I used to do. You got You got yep. You got a young that, boy now. Yes, and he is he, is he taking any interest in the dogs? Oh, he he. Those are his dogs. You, those are you his. can you can ask him and he'll tell you. Absolutely, he, that's uh, pretty. That's pretty sweet though. It's just different when. Yeah. The last few years, done it all really yeah. kind of just me, yeah. and then having someone that always wants to go with you. That's yeah. a little different. He yeah. he was not happy that. Uh, I was leaving all weekend, yeah. hopefully this weekend. So. Yeah. Well, hey, I won't take any more of your time, Owen, but uh, Sir Mongo, he sure made his mark on the in the sport, uh, just uh, in in UKC and as a hound, period. So congratulations on a, Thank you. I, on I all the accomplishments that. you've had. On, I do. On it's Sir been a Mongo. fun ride with him. It has. Yeah, Mongo is one of those dogs, one of the, he's a hard, hard running, hard, he's always just on go, you know, going uh, as hard as he can go, and it's hard to slow that hound down, but uh, the accomplishments that that dog's had in the in the format is just uh, outstanding, so I hope you enjoyed that uh, interview. My next interview here is going to be with Mr. Steve Moore. He is the owner of a dog named Shenango White River Bill. Uh, Bill is uh, off of the number one sire in UKC, Shenango Trigger, uh, who has uh, his, his record, offspring record is just uh, outstanding. Bill being one of these. Bill, has he's also a, a hound born in 2015. Uh, most of the wins that were put on were put on by uh, uh, Jason Vandergriff. Uh, but, uh, Steve, uh, is the owner of the dog. He co-owned him with, with Steve or with, uh, Jason, but, uh, I got a chance to sit down separately first with Steve Moore. Uh, we talked about Bill and then, uh, Jason and I also sat down after that. So these next two interviews, you are going to hear first from Steve and then followed uh, right after that by, uh, Jason Vandergrift. Here you go. Take a look. Well, I'm sitting here with Mr. Steve Moore. He is the owner of, uh, Hall of Fame, Shenango White River Bill. How are you doing, Steve? It's fine. Yeah, we're sitting here. How you been? Yeah, doing good, doing good. We've, uh, we're here at the McVeigh Hunt while we're recording this here, and I uh, got you pulled in. I know you've been a little 
don't want to you don't you're not a you're not a man of many words are you You like to sit back and let somebody else do the talking don't you steve you got that right <laughs> yeah but hey prunny would be proud that i got you in on this he would have been very proud yeah. of you steve yeah <laughs> so hey let's talk about white river bill this is a dog that is now in the hall of fame one of few here but he you raised him from a pup did you not Yes, I did. You bred him. You bred the litter and everything. So the mama yes. is uh, White River Double D. What is she? What is she out of? She's out of White River Top and Nothing. Mm, the man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, tough. That's uh, Prunny's old tough dog. Number yes. one reproducer. Yeah, there you go. So she's one of those. And then the other, the sire of him is uh, the current number one reproducer, Shenango Trigger. Everybody knows Shenango Trigger. Yep. So you made that cross. What? Uh, so you had him. You did you start him as a pup and everything? Or yes, what? I did. Yeah. Did he? Was he? How was he when he was young? Was he an early starter? What kind of? What kind of pup was he? He ran the first two rabbits he ever ran. Oh yeah. So ever that he ever came across. About yeah. how old was he then? You think? About three months old. Oh yeah. Heck yeah. So he started pretty early. You know this dog is. Uh, now, fast forward now to these competitions. I know you had Jason Vandergriff hunted him a whole bunch here in the last several years. Oh, yeah. And this dog is, nobody likes to draw Bill. He's a tough sucker to, he's just tough to beat. Crazy. <laughs> is that what you call it? Yeah. <laughs> Wide open. Yeah. He is, uh, I've been out there with him and, and I can see he's a, uh, man, that, this dog is all business out there. And he's, he's going 100 miles an hour all the time, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah, so what is it that you like the best about old Bill? He knew how to get in the front end. Yeah, that and his, just his hustle. Yeah. Yeah, heck he yeah. Hustled. Heck yeah. So uh, his first cast win that he ever got was in Kirby, or uh, where did, yeah, Kirby, Pennsylvania at a qualifier in June of 2017. Do you remember who hunted him there or don't you? No, I don't remember who ran him. Yeah. It was either I or... Vandercraft. One of you two. Yeah, it was would have been a qualifier. So that was his very first uh, cast win or first placement, June of 2017. And then to make uh, Hall of Fame, he got a, it amounts to having 37 grand champion wins. And he accumulated that. He got that on June 22nd in Pennsylvania again, Jefferson, Pennsylvania. And you, you, we were talking earlier, he said, you, you know, Vandergriff finished him there. Yes. Yeah, so... Well, you know, hey, I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time, but, uh, man, I just want to congratulate you, uh, Steve. Uh, a nice dog here, done a whole lot of winning, you know, and, and he's, he, how old is he now? He should be about eight. Yeah, about eight. So his birthday was in September of 2015. Yeah, so yeah. that would make him eight years old. So, But he's still, gosh, he's still strong for an eight-year-old dog, is he not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I run him quite a bit. yeah. Yeah, I think last year at, uh, what was it, at the, or no, maybe in the spring at the NHBA days when Jason was hunting him. No, it would have been a year ago I drew out with him. I was just like, holy cow, this dog is just, I see why he's just tough to be strong, 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 strong. But uh, anyways, hey, I, I appreciate you taking a little time here, and uh, congratulations on this Hall of Fame White River Bill, man. Thank you, Alan. All right, you take care, bud. Okay. What made Bill so special throughout the years is from a puppy coming up, he, he had the natural ability just to go deep and really didn't care about other dogs and just to go out and find a rabbit. That was, you know, what I really liked about the dog the most is he would go in, just hunt by himself, jump rabbits, and would always want the front end. And, you know, a lot of the people that's running with me, um, uh, you know, always knew that the dog handled extremely well, and that is not the case with this dog. And throughout the years, you know, they just called him here, Bill, Bill. That's all I've heard for years. But um, other than the dog, just his natural ability from, you know, a young age, just to go and find rabbits was is just was extremely hard hunt is what I really loved about this dog for years. Yeah, and that's I think that's what made him. He was just hard to beat. I've been with him a time or two where I saw him, you know, and guys that talk about he's just so tough to beat, and I saw why he's so tough to beat. He is a hard-going dog, and you're saying he was like that from a puppy on. Yeah. So, Yes, he, uh, which Steve Moore, you know, 
uh, raised and trained him there as a puppy, and he uh, Steve had him right when I got him. And yeah. It was just one of them deals that me and the dog clicked together. Yeah. Well, I am here with Jason Vandergrift. He's talking about Bill. Bill, he handled Bill to most of his wins that he had uh, from uh, from nothing to uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, most of them, you say maybe Jay and maybe Steve handled him a time or two, but you put on most every every one of those wins. But uh, yeah, Jason Vandergrift from West Virginia. So how did you first get hooked up with Bill? How did that happen? <laughs> well, that's that's kind of funny, Alan. Uh, I, I'd been out of the Biggles for four or five years as the kids was growing up, going through sports. I woke up on a Saturday morning. I told my wife, Angie, that I said, I'm going to go to our state hunt. I went down there and I had no idea who half these people was anymore, but there was Steve Moore and, um, I BS with him, you know, half the day. And he's like, Hey, Vandergriff, you, you coming to the hunt tomorrow? I said, yeah. He said, boy, I got a dog where I'd like you to run. And it, uh, ran the dog, won the cast. We went to the winner's pack and I believe he won that winner's pack that day. And, uh, we get back to the clubhouse and Steve throws the dog in the truck. And he said, take him home. I was like, all right. So when I pulled back in the driveway at the house, unloaded the dog, and my wife's like, we're back in it. And I said, I guess so. <laughs> he didn't really give you a whole lot of no, choice. No, he didn't really but give it's me kind, a whole lot of choice. It's kind of hard to get away from a dog that keeps winning, though, isn't it? it yeah, exactly, Alan. I mean, all, all, everybody, all, you know, everybody in the sports, we want to win. And yeah. when you get a dog that is competitive and we, winning every weekend, it's hard to leave that dog at home and yeah, and you you kind of leave your, our younger dogs to yeah. the side, and they don't yep. they don't get the time that they need. But yeah, yeah, but the old dog did everything I wanted for years. Yeah, and my accomplish was to try to get him in the NHBA Hall of Fame, then the UKC Hall of Fame, and once we got that accomplished, he he become a a Steve Moore retired farm dog. Yeah. That's what we call him. So yeah, hey, I made note of two different dates: June of twenty seventeen and June of twenty twenty two. Let's start with the first date. Uh, Kirby, Pennsylvania. I've got that listed as the first ever recorded win for him. Did you hunt him at that event? You remember that, Alan? I, I can't been so many. I, it's <laughs> been so many yeah. wins. Yeah, it was. It either had to be me or or Jay. Yeah, it was one of the two because, like I said, uh, Steve Steve did not like handling the dog that well, <laughs> and uh, he probably didn't like catching the dog. Well, you, you that mentioned was, that in the yeah, onset. He that was, was the whole deal. Yeah. Steve said, oh, "If I can't run a shock <laughs> collar, I'm not running him." Yeah. Uh, yeah. What? What did no nobody worked on him, or is he just that hard headed, or kind of hard headed like that, or is he just that? He's naturally hard headed, but if the dog has a TT15 on him at home yeah he you never have to shock him he knows he, he knows. knows he <laughs> knows when the prongs are on <laughs> and then like i said when we come we come here it's a different dog he did, just did that ever get you in a hunt where you didn't get him you have 30 minutes to catch your dog after a timeout did that ever? alan the only person that couldn't get him <laughs> was jay oh and really? he was running in ohio up here yeah. and he was also running a rabbit Oh, yeah. on a timeout and just yeah. 30 minutes got yeah. him but yeah i've always ran him down now yeah. i've been 25 26 27 minutes i've been to the edge a bunch but yeah. i never yeah. got scratched with him that's kind of funny how dogs like that you know kind of a winning dog like that but that's uh that's the one everybody knows he's hard to catch out jason's yeah. out there trying to catch old bill hey the what, <laughs> one, of our, down. Uh, one of our funniest deals is you know everybody knows he's hard-headed and and I was at a hunt one time with Trevor McQueen and Zach Bowersock, and we was all standing in the field. The dogs had just held a rabbit up. Here comes the dogs back across the field, and Bill zigzagged in between every one of us to get around to go, and he knew that rabbit, you know, was still down in there, they thought. And uh, Trevor's like, oh, I'd have done got rid of that dog. I said, but he's a winner, Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> but that hey, was that was a good cat. Hey, a couple of big wins that you had. Don't take much of your time here. Where you handled him. One I remember was the All Star Series. The overall thing, you won the whole thing. Won the, the whole runoff. Thing yep, the yep. national runoff. Uh, let me see what what else. What are some other ones you had? Uh, you had some. Uh, he was always always seemed to be in in the top top. Yeah. If there's a top sixteen or a top four, yeah, he man, made the, he got real close to the. Uh, world finals one year and you finished seventh i believe i got real close up here at nationals one time uh as a champion uh i got fifth place uh terry limley hunt he uh overall winner uh 
Yeah, the, the, the and clash. Actually, the first clash, two years of the first two couple years, years of yep. the clash, he uh, made the finals in it. Yep. Uh, yep. Last year at the uh, McVeigh Hunt, he made it all the way to the finals and uh, finished, I believe, second yep. uh, in the McVeigh Hunt yep. last year. Have uh, I don't know if I asked Steve this. I talked to him about him as well, but I'm not sure if I asked him anymore if he's been breeding him any or not. Got anything out of him coming on at all? I, or? I believe Steve's got some stuff in the making, and yeah. I'm just going to leave it yeah, like, leave that, it like that. Yeah. He, you know, Steve's a guy of kind of very few words when it comes to the the breeding side of it, and he'll just tell you, hey, come get a dog already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, we didn't get to the second date I wrote down, June 22nd. That was uh, grand champion win number 37. Not all, not total, not counting the registered and the champion wins, grand champion wins after he was a grand in June again, Jefferson PA. That that's the win that made him the Hall of Fame, earned him the Hall of Fame title. Yep, you know, and were you aware of it that day when you got that win? That actually, that was the right that actually, was the Alan, I was aware of it because I believe I might have called you like two days before and I, I was like, did. Can you kind of give me a run up, you know, of yeah. what I'm laying? He's like, Well, yeah. I think you're one or two away and I was like, Well, I'm going to a hunt this weekend yeah. and and I actually, I got, I think, uh, the day before I might've got a cast win. And then I went to, uh, Jefferson PA up there and I was like, I know I'm definitely in now. And like you said, you called me like two or three days later and you're like, yeah, that's enough. He's yeah. in. I said, well, he's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. In another interesting hound has done a whole lot of winning, you know, and mostly with Jason behind him just a, a tough dog to beat and a hall of fame dog, white river bill. The next uh, hound you're going to uh, hear about is a dog out of New York, actually. And uh, he is, a, I mentioned, uh, a Shenango Trigger. This dog is going to be a grandson of Trigger. His sire is off of uh, a dog named Miller's All Day Jasper that was owned by Carl Miller of Albion, New York. And Clyde is one of the, he is uh, another dog born. He's just a five-year-old at the moment, 20, uh, May of 2019th birthday. Uh, and this dog has done a lot, a lot of winning already. And he is he is very much still in his prime. And I would say we're going to hear a whole lot more uh, from Clyde. But uh, I had the chance to sit down with Carl, and we talked about Clyde and some of his winnings that he's done. And, and here is uh, Carl and I talking about that. Well, Carl, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. We were sitting here in Coshocton, Ohio, and you came all the way down from New York. That's a good little ride for you probably, isn't it? Yeah, about five and a half hours. Oh, it's not too bad then. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, one of your one of your big name dogs you've got, Return of Clyde. Seems like we see in the winter circle all the time with this dog. Well, he does pretty good for me. He's been good for you, hasn't he? Yes, sir, yes. Yeah, so, uh, but let's let's start from, uh, he is, let's talk about his pedigree a little bit. He is off of Miller's All Day Jasper, another grand that you own and, and, and competed, old Jasper, right? Yep, and I, I got him from uh, Jeff Davis. I got Jasper from Jeff Davis when he was a puppy. Uh, Bill McFarland actually told me about him. Um, I was looking for a pup out of trigger, and Bill McFarland told me to uh, try this one. So yeah. I bought three of them. I bought Jasper, uh, Rogan's Buck. Was done pretty good. So he Buck came through your kennel too. It, he did, yeah. Why didn't you keep Buck too? Uh, because I was running a juniors race. <laughs> yeah. I had Jasper, a dog called Rico, yeah, and Buck. Yeah, I remember that Rico name. And too. Rico was winning the juniors race at the time. Yeah. Jasper was doing well, and I couldn't hunt all three of them. Yeah. So that's why I had like Buck go. Talk about loaded for bear. <laughs> As it turns <laughs> out, that's, you know Rogan's Buck is he's you know he's. Certainly left his mark, but so those, so Jasper was one of those. I guess I didn't realize that off the trigger then. Yep. And then, yeah. Then uh, what about the maternal side here? Uh, All day Jenny. What what was she? All day Jenny was a, uh, uh, let me see. She is a double Reggie bred female. Okay. Um, that I bought because um, I like a lot of the Reggie stuff. Um, and I bred her to Jasper. She was a really nice female. She didn't get competition hunted because I had the other males that I was competition yeah. hunting, and she never got put in um, one. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Uh, so you end up here with uh, Clyde out of that litter of Jasper and Jenny. End up with Clyde there. What? How did you? How did you pick Clyde out of the litter? Well, it's funny. Uh, Clyde is a puppy that nobody else wanted. Um, <laughs> I tried to give him away. I don't know how many times. Really? Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, 
and uh, he got to be about four months old, and he just started cranking. And so of course, started, everybody wanted him after that. Yeah, so he started early then too. He he did. He started really early, and uh, I mean, I could I could solo Clyde at four months old. No kidding. Yeah. Thanks. So you already knew he was. You, you already knew that he was going to have some a gifted I, gifted little young dog. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I had high hopes from him at very young age. Yeah. Heck yeah. So when did you do you remember the first hunt you put him in? Uh yeah, it was uh Stephen Chumley's hunt. I believe he was about nine or ten months old. Oh yeah. You know, we have on our record, I looked in his records here, March eighth is when he got his first placement. So was that also his first hunt? That was his first yeah, hunt. Yeah, that was at the Smoking Sea Beagle Club. Sure yeah. was. That was do, do you remember it. that hunt at all, really? I do. Um I actually I had him and Jasper. Um and uh I got into the winner's pack and registered, and then I was hunting another dog in the other in uh, in, in, for the other winner's pack. Oh, there was two casts that went out. Oh yeah. So Clyde, Steve Chum, Stephen Chumney actually hunted Clyde for me in that winner's pack, and he got ended up getting third. Oh, okay, yeah. Wow. So that was his first hunt, placed third that day. Yep. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, so that was March 8th of 20. We didn't go back and talk about his birthday. He was born in May of 2019, I guess it was, when the uh, when he was born. Yeah, I think that's right. We were talking about Clyde here. So he was, yeah, he was, uh, and he is, you know, at this point, we only have, what, six or eight dogs, I guess, that have made the Hall of Fame. And it's a pretty elite list, really, you know, talking. You I'm know. Pretty, pretty proud of him. Though. Yeah. He did it as a three-year-old well, dog which that's what i was gonna say you know he's the youngest by quite a quite a margin really yeah he's uh like i said he's done really well for me he's yeah. uh done some pretty good things yeah so then he made hall of fame in march just this last march uh right after nhba days and nhba days this last year was in indiana and if you remember we had some serious snowstorms and cold and blowing i was there and yeah i remember it, it was tough it yeah was tough. and well i thought you were but you finished him not there the 37th grand win was actually back home in albion so yeah. what what happened there did you go home from nhba days and i you, yeah I, I lost in nhba days and uh i drove straight home and uh he had to ride the truck the whole way, and I went right to the hunt and hunted him in the hunt, and he ended up winning no his way. cast. No way. And the weather was not much better in New York. Well, I can tell you it was snowing and blowing, and I think Sunday was Saturday morning or Sunday morning. It was like 17 degrees there in Indiana at that trial that I'm talking about. Yeah. So yep. then yep. you take him back to home to New York. The weather is still about the same. You haul him all the way there, get him out, and get his last yep. cast win, make some Hall of Fame. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, he uh, didn't even get a break. I mean, I Jeez. I drove him there and barely made the deadline to get him yeah. in. And uh, so, uh, what? Let's talk about a couple other wins you've had uh, outside. Of, we'll get to NHB, the NHBA win in just a minute here. But what you, you ran him in the All Star Series? So when he was young, right? I, I did. He won. Uh, he won the juniors race. Um, his region. He won his region in, in the juniors race. Yep, would have been the East. The Eastern East, region. Yep. yep. Um, and then. Uh, and those are basically derbies, dogs under yeah, right. under two years of age, yeah. Yep. yep. So he uh he did really good that first year and I mean he kept on going uh the second year and that he finished fourth in the all star race uh last year. Yeah. Um Yeah, he uh he won the New York State Championship. Yeah. Um so yeah, he's done pretty good for me. Yeah, yeah, I would I would say so. So uh, let's talk about NHBA days. Tennessee, what was that, two years ago? Yeah. Two yeah. years ago. So uh, in 2020, it would have been 2022, I guess, right? Or is it 21? I think it was 21. 21. 21. 21. Yeah. yeah, 21. Heck, he's, he's just barely a two year old. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Wins NHBA days down there. But yeah, tell, tell me about how was that experience? It was, it was amazing. Uh, like I said, I was super proud of him. Um, he was going against dogs that I really think highly of. They're great dogs, like mm -hmm. Mongo, and I mean a lot of big name dogs. Mm -hmm. um, Kane, and when you can talk bring about it, the world champion, Kane. two yeah. world, yeah, both, yep, world champion Kane and world champion Mongo. Yeah, yeah. Um, whenever you can go against dogs of those caliber, which are probably some of the best dogs I've ever hunted with, mm -hmm. and compete, and I'm very proud of. 
Yeah, heck yeah, he should be absolutely. And uh, yeah, so that I know, I know that was a big win for you. And and not just that, he's he's built very well. He's a he's a good looking sucker too. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, so uh, thirty seven cast wins, grand cast wins. You know, if you count them up totally, it'd be a to grand total of fifty cast wins in UKC. But having done it as early as he did, uh, man, it's pretty impressive, Carl. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, so what what do you got? Uh, what do you got? He's just he's just coming into his prime. What what do you do with a dog like that? Now you can't you can't really I, I kind of I, I don't really know at this point. Uh, I my main goal is uh, to win the world. Yeah. Um, he's qualified this year to do the Clash of Champions, so I'll yeah. do that next year. Yeah. Um, besides that, uh, probably not much. Just put him in the world hunt and yeah. hopefully get that done and move on to another one maybe but uh yeah it's... i got some nice pups out of clyde that i'm gonna start well, that was, i was gonna ask you so you bred them a little bit already yeah yeah he uh they're young yet they're not uh um he actually has one champion on the ground now uh she's kind of a lot like him she started early um i think she made champion before she was a year old yeah uh got a couple wins towards grand now and uh, besides that, I have uh, just a couple of young, young litters out of yeah, it. Yeah, gotcha. So, what is? How does he win? What? What? What is? What is his strong suit? What is? I think his strong suit is he doesn't have a weak suit. Uh, he is a very well-rounded dog. Um, he's fast, but he's not super fast. Uh, balanced. He is. He's very well-balanced dog. Um, he he hunts hard. He jumps his fair share of rabbits. Um, he don't get in trouble. Um, just very well balanced dog. Those are the best. <laughs> Those yeah, are hard I, ones to find. Yeah, you know, I don't know that. I don't think I have ever hunted with him, and I'm not sure why I haven't. You know, been around the last several years like that, and as you, as much as you've had him at these hunts, I guess just never happened. But I sure would like to sometimes. But I've heard so many guys say he is just a a super a super young dog, and it's not like. You know, there's guys out here handling dogs that have been doing it for a long, long time and probably a lot longer than you. I'm not saying you're not a good handler, because, <laughs> you, but uh, it's not like you're some big name handler or anything like that. You know? I'm not. Yeah. No, I'm, but, um, it took uh, Chris Rogan to handle Jasper to get him into seventh in the world last year. I couldn't do it. I, <laughs> yeah. I had to farm it out. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, hey, I don't want to take a whole lot of your time here, Carl, but I do appreciate it. And but most importantly, congratulations on thank you very on, much on uh, on uh, your success with Clyde and and having earned that uh, Hall of Hall of Fame title and everything. And man, I don't know what's next, but it seems like there's still plenty there to do with the. He's not uh, he's not saying his last song yet. I don't think. I, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we'll be talking about this again in the world, maybe. Yeah, Carl's a good guy in the sport, and it's always good to sit down and, and uh, talk with him. And uh, it's really interesting uh, him talking about uh, Clyde. He's, uh, that's a dog that he's just has really put him on the map, so to speak. And certainly congratulate to Carl with all the success he's had with, with Clyde there. All right, number seven on the Hall of Fame list uh, is a dog that comes out of the state of uh, Ohio, Trimble, Ohio, actually, a dog owned by Jeff Ng and co-owned with Matt Turner. Now, Matt has put on most of the wins on this dog, and it's a dog named Little Italy's Whole Shot. It was a dog that uh, is off of a dog named Hartleyville Grim Reaper, a dog that his, his sire also did a lot of winning in his day, but... Uh, had a chance to sit down with both Jeff and Matt talking about the whole shot. Here, here's that interview with them. Well, I'm here with Matt Turner and Jeff Ng. Jeff, you show as the first owner on this Hall of Fame dog, Whole Shot. Little Italy's Whole Shot. What's his registered name, actually? Uh, Little Italy's Whole Shot. That's, that's it, yep. yep. So on our record, it says Champion Grand, uh, Grand Hunting Beagle Champion Hall of Fame. Little Italy's Whole Shot, yep. So, we uh, just recently made Hall of Fame, one of the very few. We've got about six or eight dogs as of this recording right now that have made it, and he is one of the more, most recent ones to make yep. it. So, let's, uh, and, and I'm here with Matt Turner, too. Matt, you've been handling him in the last year or two, but we'll get to that here in a minute. 
But uh, let's start uh, in the beginning a whole shot. Did you raise him as a puppy, or how did how did he come about for you, Jeff? Yep, I raised him as a puppy. Okay, so uh, off of your own, he's off of Grim Reaper, which is a dog you own as well. Yep. And then what what about his mama, Run and Gun Holly? Was, yeah, she's a dog that we bought. So yeah. you owned her as well. Yeah, I owned her. So you were yeah. the breeder of this dog. Yes. So what made you what made you decide to keep whole shot here? To keep any of his litter mates too? Yeah, there's three grand. All three that we hunted are grand champions. Okay, and what are the other dogs you're talking about in this uh, litter? Little Whitley's Blue Maniac. He's a grand champion. And then uh, three's Little Whitley's Miley. She's a grand champion as okay. well. Okay, grand hunting beagle champion. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so let's go back to the beginnings here. So uh, it takes 37 grand champion cast wins to, to get this Hall of Fame title. But... Uh, November 17th, according to his records on file at UKC, November of 2017, Ellenboro, West Virginia, is where he got his first cast win. You remember that hunt? Yep, sure did. Who handled him? I did. You did? Yep. Remember anything about the hunt? Yeah, I remember we turned loose. He, he wasn't very old, and we turned loose right where we seen a bunch of deer on a big mountainside <laughs> down there. probably saying, oh, no. Was, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I asked the guy, I said, where are we going in now? He said, right there where all them deer went. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Didn't but, bother uh, him, huh? No. No, they, we run on a big old mountainside. He, he was a lot faster then, I think, when he was young. He smoked them. But, oh, yeah. You know, those guys kept thinking their dogs were on a different rabbit. And I had to be like, well, if they come where he is, then I'm minus and just for quitting. But I think he's just that far ahead of him. Yeah. Was that his first hunt period? Very first hunt Was it? Period, so he yeah. got one his cast the first time. And then and then it was really hot in the winter's back. Uh, Roy Short was the judge. Him and I think his daughter or daughter-in-law judged the winter's back. Um, we ran we ran one rabbit in the winter's pack. He had first strike and got the line by himself and. That was the winner's pack. So he won the hunt that day. Yeah. So he placed first in the winner. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So um, the dog did a, had a lot of boatload of cast wins since then. Or when did you come in, Matt? Um. Let's see. Was he already granted before you started hunting he, him, or not really? Yeah, probably mostly. He, I think Craig got the last yeah. champion win on him in Kentucky. Craig, I think the last champion win was in that. Um, Plum Creek. Oh, yeah. No, that was his first grand. Hunt. So it was right before that. It was the so, Kentucky State. So um, the following spring from that year is when I I took over. Okay. Yeah. So you said, Jeff, you said there were several guys that handled him, put yeah, cast well, wins well, on him throughout his career. My son put he he put at least two. I know he qualified him for the world once, and he got one of his. First place overall is his registered dog, and then mostly it's Craig, yeah. me and Craig, and then mostly Matt, and Craig's done a few over the last year, a couple. Yeah, so the dog was uh, July of 2016 is his, is his birthday, so uh, um, yeah, so that makes him, what, uh, seven. seven right now. Yeah, yeah seven-year-old dog. A little yeah. over seven. Yeah. So, uh, Jeff, what is it? What, what do you like about the dog? Oh, he's just the funnest. If you take him by yourself or with the crowd, he's just fun. Yeah. He just rolls. I mean, where I live is a lot of woodsy hills, and, and he just—it's just fun to yeah. listen to him driving down there. And he, when he was young, he was real good at jumping right, being first strike dog and a first line dog. It's yeah. a perfect combination. Yeah, but even today, even at his age, and I saw him maybe what was it a year ago? Maybe at this hunt, I think, or I drew you somewhere. Was it this? That was hunt? the uh, NHBA NHBA runoff. days. Yeah, that was maybe a, a year ago in the spring, so a year and a half ago. Yeah. And shoot, at the you know, he can still pack yeah. now. Heck yeah, he can. <laughs> yeah, he can. He can still drive them pretty yeah. good. Yeah, so it's, it's it, amazing to me. I've never yeah. had a dog that could still run that fast at that age yeah so you put matt you put a bunch of a gas bunch, winds yeah. on the dog so let's oh. let's talk about some of that what were some of the highlights you might have um let's see my favorite one is when i won the pruny classic with him yeah i hunted him the first three rounds he won all three rounds i decided to rest him i didn't and i was kind of in the nhba points race at the time and i chose not to run that fourth cast i just rushed him because i was already in the finals and then he went out there and smashed him yeah what year was that 
19, 2019. 19. I was going to say probably four years ago, three, four years ago. Yeah. yeah. 2019. 2019. And then his brother, Blue, I won it, won the pruning out with him in 2017. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you, he, you've had him in the world hunt. How many times has he been in the world hunt? Um, I don't know. Four or five? I've never hunted him in it, so it would have been or Craig. He yeah. Many times he went. He always but. seems to win at least one cast. Last year he done he won two casts and then lost by a little bit in that semifinals. So he so made, he was in the top he twenty was though. Top that, six. Last, yeah. 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 Yep. Top sixteen. Um. Then he was at top sixteen of grands last year at nationals. Um. He won the Indiana State Hunt. The highest state hunt. A spring classic. Spring classic. Um, and then, you know, he's had wins in Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia, um, Kentucky, Pennsylvania. Been out west, Missouri, and those places. No, no I, ain't out, I ain't had him out there. Briars are pretty thick out there. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't like traveling that far. Yeah. Yeah. It's Speaking of traveling, has he always traveled well? You know, some yeah. dogs, some dogs do, some don't. No, he he travels well. He uh, no problems there. Now he does have limes, and when it flares up, you know, he gets pretty down there for yeah. about a week. Yeah, you've had to treat him yes. quite a bit for that. Yeah. You know. So, what is it that you like about him? What, I, what do you think is some of his strong suits? What do you like best about him? I How like, does he win? He he is really fast now he used to be a little faster than he is now but for his, for the speed he has he has really good control now he'll get a little goofy from time to time but um for the most part he he's got pretty good control and most of the time he hunts really well and jumps rabbits i mean you know, when he opens he's got it um and he's a really good check dog yeah. He he he's won a lot of cast off checks. Yeah. Um but you can ask Jeff or anybody else. I absolutely despise solo on the dog. I think it's the dumbest thing in the world. I think it's the best thing in the world. I don't. I <laughs> do not agree. Too. I do not agree, but I do too. <laughs> that dog there, I would solo him all day long. Yeah. He's the funnest dog yeah. to solo. Yeah. And he runs just as hard soloing as he as he does with a pack. It's as fun as running the pack, really. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, he just goes. And, I mean, um, yeah, well, I, I'm not a solo guy, but <laughs> I, also, I solo him. Yeah, it, it's, I'm just teasing on that. I, I don't know. I'm, I love the solo dogs. Me too. When Matt was hunting Whole Shot's dad, and I kept telling him to solo him too back then when he had yeah. him up there. Like, he's like, that's dumb. I'm like, it's boring it to me out. but well I don't, you know and it depends on the dog obviously yeah. as you know that i don't right. have to tell you anything you know yeah. but uh you know everything that i know about you know getting dogs ready and different right. dogs are different you know but sometimes to to get them to where they you know aren't just where they can you know too crazy yeah 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 <laughs> you know that and and not just followers either you know yeah um that's what makes leaders in my opinion you know a lot of times but uh so yeah, so a lot of uh, as a lot of cast wins, you know, obviously accumulated those thirty-seven. So the first one was in June, first cast win, and he got that win in the winners mm -hmm. back June of twenty seventeen. Uh, no, was it not? Uh, no, November of twenty seventeen, Ellenboro, uh, West Virginia, and he made Hall of Fame his his thirty uh, seventh grand cast win in August of twenty three. So just last month in Malta, Ohio. Yep. So and you said Craig Wilson handled him. Yep. There. We had yeah. Craig so we could hunt the other dogs. Yeah. So, uh, hey, Matt, I know you've hunted a lot of good dogs over the years, but uh, he's right up there with some of the best you've hunted. Yep, definitely. So what's uh, have you bred him any, or what, what's your plans with him from here forward? Have you bred him any or now? Are you planning to? Yeah, what? we've bred him a couple times. We got actually one of his pups, one cast here yesterday. He's we're here at the McVeigh Memorial yeah. here while we're recording this, and if – we're sitting here on the side. There's a side street right here at the building. So if you hear the background noise of vehicles going yeah. by, that's what it is. But yeah, I think yeah. we got two litters, and we're just starting to campaign. And Joe Merritt's been hunting one in Indiana a little bit, and 
we got two here that we just really want just came painting one of them but he he's made a champion and the guy got three wins to yeah. one grand and like Joe, eight months joe's female has four wins towards champion oh yeah and then we got a female um stephanie brown's female her and izzy's females do here in about a week or so okay yeah so you'll have something to something yeah. out of him to kind of carry it on oh yeah i, I love the rip dog we got now yeah. he, he just turned three and like i said we just started hunting him and actually craig's hunting him most of the time so but uh he's i like him real well yeah yeah well, hey guys, I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time here, but I, I appreciate. I want to congratulate you on you know. There's it's harder than people thought. That it was would hard. Be. That was yeah. hard. I mean, that was a lot of time spent. Yeah. Not not only at trials or driving, or I mean, a lot of time spent yeah. training yeah. and and the the thing I think is the most neat about it really is all them dogs that's made it have all had to run against each other this yeah. entire time mm -hmm. they've all yeah they've all ran against each other yeah you know times. i know when we first came out with this setup for hall of fame it's based on performance you know cast wins is what it amounts to and i know there were folks that thought you know surely some of these other dogs would have made it you know before we had this system and I could kind of go back and look at the old All-Star series, yeah. basically just because, you know, we kept points for them when they had cast wins, even if it didn't count towards their championship. So I could use that right. method to check it. And there were other dogs, you know, uh, uh, Brian Meads, a couple of his females, Booty and Dez, and some of those dogs yeah. that won a lot back in those days. You would have thought they would have probably had enough to make it. Yeah, and, or being and, close, yeah. Yeah, and they were further off than you would have thought. Really? Yeah, you know, so as far as 37 grand wins yeah. that, and doing it tough. at the upper tier uh yeah. you know classes it's tough it was it's tough. tough and the dogs that are making yeah. it in i think it's a pretty i think it's yeah. a pretty tough that's a that's a list of yeah. pretty nice dogs. elite elite it's a lot list. better yeah. than somebody voting on something yeah you know, yeah it's, it's i think it's awesome way you yeah did this. yeah so well hey congratulations there little italy's whole shot he'll forever be in the ukc hall of fame hunting beagle here and uh and I want to congratulate you. And, Thank and you. Thank you. Yep. So, uh, all right. Well, appreciate you all sitting down with me today. All right. Yeah. So this year's world championship, the 2023 world hunt a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, whole shot did win his cast in the first round. I do believe he, uh, he got put out in the second round there, but I think that was kind of the last hurrah for Matt and old whole shot, but those two certainly have had quite the career and, and uh, have done a lot of winning and just a solid, solid dog there. So congratulations to both Jeff and Matt on a outstanding, uh, outstanding uh, career with Whole Shot. Nice hound, born in 2016. All right, so the last dog uh, we're going to talk about here is a dog named Brooke Hollow Cade, and this is one of the young. He is the youngest dog to have made Hall of Fame. He was born in October of 2019 so he just literally turned five years of age october 15th actually a couple days ago as of this recording here but uh he was uh owned by uh, uh mr gary moore i believe at one time uh but uh, jason snelson from wasola missouri uh, is the owner of this dog now and uh, this dog is just his his cast win percentage is impressive and uh it's uh just another nice young hound, and I'd say just very well in his prime still. We'll probably still hear a lot from this dog, but here's uh, Jason Snelson and I. Uh, we sat down at the World Hunt here several weeks ago, and we talked about Cade. Hall of Fame Brook Hollow Cade, Jason Snelson, Missouri. What do you... That sounds pretty cool, Hall sounds, of Fame. Sounds real cool, yes. Yeah, been a long time coming. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk about... Uh, uh hall of fame grand champion brooke hollow cade i know you didn't uh you didn't haven't always had him but how how did that come about you got him from mr uh mr gary here right yeah i did yes i uh i've had him longer than most people think i had half of him since he was a puppy oh you I did ju i just didn't send the papers off okay you know? yeah yeah I'm trying to save 20 bucks or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so so you've you've been around the dog his whole life then. pretty much yes. so you hunted him probably more than anybody else did pretty much yeah yeah, yeah yeah well well for sure yeah gary right. hunted him quite a bit but yeah and he gave up on him yep yeah so let's talk about what's he what's he out of he is out of zach shepherd's cash dog and one of gary moore's 
John females. Okay. Yeah, shine. Yeah, shine. Yeah. 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 So he kind of, he comes from a family of uh, of rabbit dogs. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. So um, man, he's he's he was a cast winning fool. Yes, he's yes, good he all over the country. He seemed has, like yeah. anywhere he took him, he was he, winning. He has. He's around Missouri. He's about 70, 80 percent win on his cast wins on his hunts. So yeah, been that, fortunate, been blessed. That's yeah. that's pretty incredible. Really. Yeah. So, what is it that you like best about him? He's a house dog. He he's is my he? boy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know. He's just got more more go than most of them. It seems like mm -hmm. most of my other dogs just more hustle. Yeah. Can't teach hustle. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, you've you've hunted him most of his life. You've had him in the world hunts. Um, have you? What what are some of the what are some of the events that he might have done well at or won? He won the Eliminator. Won yeah, the that's Eliminator right. West, yep. Um, yep. and then he won the Clash Regional in two years. He won both of those as a two year old. Yeah, and yep. And we've this is just second world he's been to, and um, we we didn't get to come last year, but we didn't have any luck this year. But that's yeah. okay. Yep. Yeah. See, how old is he right now? He's three year old. Three. So mm -hmm. he's yeah, he's the youngest yep. of that crop. Yeah. Yep. He's the three year old. Yeah. So you can kind of forget about that. It seems like he's been winning so long. Every, yeah. Or at least I thought he's just an older yep. dog than he actually. The is. The first time I had him at the world, he was just eleven months old. So, oh yep. really? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, he shoot, he's got his whole life ahead of he him does. still. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. what what are your plans for him? Just keep I, keep pounding or keep pounding him, huh? Probably just big hunts for now. I'll try yeah. to get our five on him and and maybe chase a couple of hound of the year races around home that, that yeah. we've not got the jacket for. And, yeah, and just try to bring him the big hunts. Yeah. So, have you bred him any at all, or do you plan to? Or yeah, like we have bred him one time. Um, bred him to one of Gary's Jackie females. Um. I have a pup that's just about ready to. I've bred him two times actually. John Hurt's bred him too, but the pups are young. Um, but have a pup that I'm going to start first of the year. He he's ready for the hunts. I'll, yeah. I'll probably hunt him next weekend at our state hunt. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to take too much of your time, but uh, congratulations, Thank man! You. I know Thank you hunt you. hard. Yes. And uh, and he he's taken you to the winner's circle a bunch. Uh, you know, a lot of times. Been and, been fortunate. And I guess I just thought he was older than that. Just right. always assumed he was. But right. shoot, he's. Got his whole life ahead yeah, of him. I hope, I hope that's right. This yes. is just a start, really. Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah. So. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you, on, Alan. Thank on, you. On, the, on the on the Hall of Fame degree. Thank you. All right, guys. Last but not least is going to be a dog named Butler's Lone Ranger. He's a 2018 model uh, owned by Nate and Brock Butler of Homer, Michigan. Now, this dog has uh, he's one of the class of 2023 to earn the Hall of Fame title. But he is, this dog is still going strong, strong, strong. In 2023, this year, he has already accumulated 30 grand cast wins this year alone and is at the top of our list for a Clash of Champions qualifiers. But here is uh, me talking with both Nate and Brock Butler about Lone Ranger. Nate, Brock, how you doing today? Good, how are you? Good, good, good. Doing good. Yeah. Hey, we are here at the McVeigh Memorial, actually, where we're recording this. So if you hear some traffic rolling by here, we're inside the building next to the road, but there's a, you can see a little background noise here. But we are here, we're going to talk about uh, Butler's Lone Ranger Hall of Fame. One of the few handful of dogs that have made it so far, and, and Ranger is one of those. And uh, in a pretty elite class, actually, if you, if you look at it, I think this thing is probably tougher to get to that many wins than a lot of people might think i was talking to one of the other guys and we were talking about the all-star series where you would have thought some of those dogs won so much and they would have been closer to this but really most of those dogs were further off than you would have thought you know those in those days under the old uh, format or the old championship points uh structure they had cast wins there that they didn't get credit for on their record but we could still go back and see how many cast wins they actually had because we kept track of those wins for the all-star points. Yeah. So, and, uh, and you look at some of those dogs, you know, but really when you compare some of these, what we're getting now, uh, you know, you know, back in the day in the all-star series, there was a couple dogs that were just kind of dominating, you know, Brian Mead had a couple dogs and really some of these dogs here today, they would have been very competitive there, you know. Brock did a good job of going back and checking all my old dogs to see how many wins they had when yeah. the point system come out. So he lets me yeah. know that the best I've ever done yeah. was 16 up until this. Yeah, well, so let's go back to April of 2018. That is when uh, Lone Ranger was born. That's his birth date there. Uh, Butler's Running Rebel, which is his sire, is a dog that you guys own. Uh, you own, Nate. And then B&L Sugar. So let's start right there with him. 
little puppy. You raised, trained him. How, how did? Uh, yeah, wife... a good good friend of mine, Ross Emerson, Ross Emerson, and I uh, owned the female together. It was time to get us a litter of pups, uh, so we uh, made the cross. Rebel was the uh, the other male dogs that we had were too young at the time. So we uh, made the cross, uh, had a litter of nine pups. Uh, we went over there, and from the first time my mom, Brock, and I went over to look at the pups, uh, Ranger just stood out to me. I really wanted a female out of the litter, um, but I looked at Ranger and watched how he acted out in the grass and, and moving around in the yard, and I told Brock, I said, we're taking that pup right there. And it was yeah. kind of not what we wanted because we wanted a female, yeah. um, but kind of the rest is history once we brought him home. Oh, yeah. You remember when he was a little pup, Brock? Yeah, I actually picked his littermate brother named Scout, and uh, Scout didn't quite turn out to be like Ranger. Dad lets <laughs> me know that he picked a lot better pup than me, so he gets the credit there. Yeah. But yeah, one of the best acting pups you'll find. Did he not start skittish early? one bit? Yeah, Just, did he start early? Or what? Yeah, actually, uh, long story short, Ranger got real sick when he was about three months old. Uh, we were at the Little League World Series. Uh, the dog went down, and uh, my mom took him to the vet. And he was in the vet for three days, and they couldn't do nothing with him, and they wanted to put him down. And uh, I said, told mom, I said, wait until we get done playing ball, and I'll come home and uh, take care of him. And we got back home, and uh, how the dog made it, I don't know. Yeah. But he went five days without eating or drinking. Um, he was, like I say, the vet had recommended to put him down. Yeah. I brought him home, was hoping for the best. And uh, my uh, dad, grandpa, papa got him back on his feet, eating some wild turkey. And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank goodness that that all worked out. Yeah. And uh, once he got healthy again, he was the easiest starting pup by four months old. And this was, you know, four weeks after being that sick. You could turn him loose in the pines and he'd go find you a rabbit. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a date written down here, September 1st of 2019. Is that ringing, that date ring a bell to either one of you guys? Yep. That would have been Ranger's first cast win ever. Me, my dad, and my grandma made the long haul down to uh, Virginia for the Southern Classic. And, uh, it was, if I'm, if I'm right, it might have been one of the, Ranger might have been in one hunt before that maybe, but it was one of the first hunts we had ever entered him in. And I said, I'm going to take this young dog down there and see what happens. And sure enough, we went out and uh, won our cast in the morning. And my dad actually handled a different dog uh, named Digger. And that was back when the registered had a winner's pack. Yeah. yeah. And we were the two dogs in the winner's pack. So we were head to head in the winner's pack. And we won't talk about who came out on top. It might not have been me, but <laughs> that, that's irrelevant, right? But that was Ranger's first ever cast win. Uh, that was uh, one then you wouldn't think would be as special as looking back now. That yeah, was, uh, and it's uh, Virginia is a whole lot different than Michigan, too. Yeah, it was yeah. a good 10, 11 hour so trip. This time of year and probably hot and dry and everything else. But yeah, so that you're right. That was uh, the first win we have recorded for him was on September the 1st. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a neat little story. And then the second date that I wrote down here is uh, number 37 grand wins. The 37th grand win came at the Clash this year in April at the, at the Nationals, just before the Nationals. Uh, but, yeah, a lot of time, although it's not – he's still a fairly young dog. Still, yeah. he's just barely in his prime right he, now. He turned five in April. Yeah, so, so just hopefully coming he's got into a couple prime, good years yeah. left. So let's talk about some of the wins, some of the some of the things you've accomplished with this dog from from uh, throughout this period. Go ahead, take it away. Oh, it, there's been a lot of cast and a lot of good uh, hunts that we've had with him. National sticks out. That was uh, I don't remember what year, maybe 2020. Um, that he was still the in the COVID year. He would have been a champion, and uh, Brock made it to the final pack of the nationals and took second with him. Um, as a dad, that was pretty fun to sit there at the sideline watching your kid go out there with a young dog that you'd put so much time into and, and have that much success. He had some great cast. I remember that weekend with some of the guys he hunted with. And yeah. He ended up second. Um, Clash has been good to us. He's uh, he's he's uh, done well there. Uh, the NHBA series. Is both kinda, years. Both years. That we've had yep. two years of the Clash. You made it to the finals both times. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, the NHBA point system, he's placed in that the last two years, and um, pretty safe to say he's going to lock into the top eight right now. Yeah. Um, but uh, three years in a row for the dog to be traveled all around the country as much as Brock wants to go, consistently win. Um, like I say, there's a lot of the wins in there that, that count, but it's been a pretty good ride for the dog. Yeah. 
you know, Brock, you hit we can easily say you are the winningest youth handler ever in UKC. I'm sure you've heard that before, but it's true. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how much of that uh is it was Ranger been a part of it? He was so my first dog ever was Butler's tank, obviously, and he was about a year and a half older than Ranger. So I had got started with him and was kind of running him. And then uh, Tank got to about three, and we were still winning casts here and there. Well, Ranger got to where he was ready for the trials, and it didn't take too long for him to take over number one. And ever since then, he's kind of been our, our number one go-to. And yeah. we've, we've put up a lot of cast wins over the last three or four years. It's been fun hauling him around. He's an enjoyable dog to yeah. have on the end of the leash for sure. Yep, so we now – record these cast wins because of the clash you know it takes five in a calendar year so we keep a running tab of the dogs all the dogs with how many cast wins they have uh we separate the males and the females now on our listing you can see that on our website and as of today uh first of september the last standings ranger is up there at the top for not just the males but also the females 26 official on his record but unofficially has 28 after today here at the McVeigh hunt, you've already got two cast wins on him here. 28 cast wins, and the closest one to him is 15. This year, not I'm talking just this year. So yeah, I told you, Brock, we're going to way too many hunts. <laughs> that's a lot of hunts. <laughs> Gosh, uh, that's just phenomenal. Yeah. In, 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 the, in one year. The 37 to get him into the Hall of Fame, I think I only handled the dog maybe four times, but before the 37 wins I got to put on him. That's grand um, wins, so people yep. know that's in the grand division only. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't handle him a ton. Uh, Brock felt bad for me after my luck Thursday night and said I could handle him today. And I think today was probably only the third win I put on him this year. I got really? on him at the Clash because the baseball schedule came out and Brock had a baseball game the weekend of the night of the Clash and Friday night of Nationals. So I got sent down here to take to run him down at the, the Clash. Other than that, it's been all bad. Well, I guarantee Roy Swaffer didn't put most of them on. <laughs> no, no. Can't get him out of Michigan anymore. Yeah. Roy so will at least say something good about Ray. That's, yeah. that's a start. <laughs> so you put a bunch of those wins on him this year, too. Then, yeah, right? yeah. We've, uh, we've got around and got some cast wins for sure. Yeah, well, so what is – have you uh, have you got anything out of him? Have you bred any females? Or are you planning to? Or what's what's that looking like? No, we bred one female last year, and unfortunately, the, the, she lost the litter. Um, we made the cross again. They're due in three weeks. Uh, I think Friday, next Friday, they go in to find out how many pups are coming, and fingers crossed we get our first uh, pups on that. Yeah, that's that's kind of cool and exciting to, yeah. Yep, it's a See female what, we own at home, so it's kind yeah. of a, a planned breeding that we've had in our mind for a couple of years. So. Yeah, hey, speaking of pedigrees, we talked about Rebel being his sire, and then the sugar dog is damn Howard. How are those dogs? Where where they come from? Yeah, the sugar mm -hmm. dog goes back to my old Pistol Pete dog. Okay, um, and, and that's the one some, you had in the world hunt. Yeah, placed in the, fi yep. the final. He made the, the final hunt. pack yep. of the world. And he placed six in the world. He was in some of those old Challenge Series days yeah. with Evan yeah. Leach uh, handling. Yeah. Um, and he was actually out of Branko's Mystery Man. That's kind of oh old. yeah, yeah. And then uh, a lot of people that I've known for years uh, remember my old Fire Dog. Yep. That was uh, who Pete was out of was firing. Yeah. So. so that was on the maternal side, but what yep. about Rebels? Rebel outside? goes back to Trigger. Um, he okay. came from Wayne. It's kind of a cross that uh, happened up there our way a couple times uh, out of Trigger. And uh, Wayne had a female called uh, Tina. Swampland Tina. Tina, so, yeah. Yep. Won a lot. I've yeah. hunted with her. She's a nice dog. Yep. yep. There's a couple other male dogs, Shooter and Charlie, that yep. Wayne owned. Yep. Made Grand and UK. City. And I think my brother had one too. What do you call him? Uh, Punch. Punch yep. was one of yep. those. Yep. yep, I think you're correct. Yep. Yep. They made that cross twice. Yep. Rebels out of the second cross. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of yeah, that kind of paints a picture where he comes from and everything. But uh, well, hey, I think we've covered uh, a little bit here, putting this little series together. But uh, man, congratulations on uh, hounds like this don't come around all the time. You know, you have one like this that is just a consistent winner like this. Uh, gosh, that's. Uh, that's got to be exciting to have a dog like this in the kennel. And you've got a couple others, too, that are doing work very well. But uh, Yeah, Brock's been pretty lucky, and I keep telling him, I said, uh, been doing this for a long time, and to have a hound like Ranger, they don't come, come yeah. around every day. Yeah, they don't. They're not always going to come this year. Yeah. No, we were, <laughs> no. We were pretty lucky with him, and if we don't get another one like him, I won't be too upset. He, yeah. 
He's done everything he's ever owed to me, for sure. Yeah, well, that probably looks pretty good. I don't know if you got your degree yet from United Kennel yeah. Club, but uh, uh, Hall of Fame, uh, Butler's Lone Ranger, got to be uh, yep. pretty sweet. As soon as the new system came out, that was the first thing Brock started looking at. His goal was to make him the youngest ever. I think he missed that by a month or so, maybe, but it was close. Um, but he started counting the wins the first day he read about the Hall of Fame. So he was, he was happy to get it done. Well, hey, we all know you guys hunt hard. You've got a nice dog here. Congratulations on your success. Thanks Thank a you. lot, Alan. We appreciate it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed all those interviews with the owners and handlers of these fine hounds that have just done such an outstanding uh, uh, job throughout their, their careers in UKC hunting beagle format. And it's uh, I love sitting down with all of them and talking about their hounds. and. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed that as well. But uh, So that's going to wrap it up for us for uh, this episode. And I hope you really enjoyed this. And again, I want to congratulate each one of those owners on their accomplishments. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss out on new episodes.